Hello guys and gals and welcome! So today is the day of the barbarian. The big giant monster barbarian creature of hulking mass and muscle and 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 weapons mastery. Because yes, the barbarian has the mastery over over all weapons. And um, as always, I want to do a little bit of uh, fun before I actually... <laughs> Uh, you know, hop into this. So we'll uh, we'll we'll play around a little bit before we actually get started, and uh, might as well. So a little bit. Oop, wrong one. We need uh, we need uh, which ones? We need F one for b -d -b -d -b -d 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 shout. We need uh, battle orders, and we need battle command. Yes. Because why not start the Day of the Barbarian with some shouts? Yeah. The potions? Let's go get some potions. That sounds like a good idea. We might need a couple potions. Especially since the barbarian is a, a rabid mana consumer of consumption. He loves a little bit of mana. Mana, mana, mana. I'll see. One, a two. Might as well grab our tomes. I have no cube. I have no rings. I have no amulet. You know what? I don't care. Still have 75 to all resistances in hell. <laughs> Let's go whirlwind some stuff. How about that? Come here, uh... Butt face. Where's butt face? We need a sub skill for, for, for us. Some leapies, yes. Some leapy leaps. What's up, Into the Void? Hello, sir. We are just getting started. Welcome, welcome. We will uh, we will soon be ready. Soon. Soon, TM. TM of soonness. First time seeing you in chat, buddy. It's always nice to see a new face. Although, you know, you may have been hanging around for a while, and maybe this is the first time you've actually said hi. That happens a lot. People be like lurking. People just be lurking all the time. Just super lurk. They be singing songs. Super lurk. Super lurk. Super lurking. Yeah. No, no. I'm kidding. Lurkers don't sing songs. That's. They don't. They don't do much of anything. They just lurk. That's their whole gambit in life. Ah. Well. Congratulations. You've made it to the right place. I am the Diablo. Ginger gaming mentor ness. There's much gingerness here, as well as chinchillas, if you like those. Ah! That's right, die. Come here, Shank. Oh, that's right, die, Shank. Aha! You are one of my YouTube YouTubeites. I see, I see. Well, I usually get quite a few people in here. I just wanted to make sure that I gave some people a chance to actually hop in here before I just started prattling on. You know, it's a, it's a thing. I do prattle. I do tend to prattle a little bit. <laughs> but we have many chinchilla emotes. I hope you guys are... I hope you're looking forward to this. We have Chonkers. I don't know if you've seen Chonkers yet. Uh, we also have uh, Chinchilla with Heart. Chinchilla with Heart. Ah, chili. What's up, B3, B6, B12? 
I kind of like your name. It's a little, I like it a little bit. I kind of do. You get like three, six, twelve, so it's like a multiplication going on there, but then there's bees in between everything. Hmm. I feel like there's a nickname in your name, and I just need to, uh, just need to remember the word. There's a word for it. What is it called? Uh, it's a term when, uh, when things continually uh, multiply. It's called an algorithm. Maybe I should just call you Al. Because you have an algorithm in your name. <laughs> What's up, adopting kids? That's a uh, uh, Which kids are you adopting exactly? Just call you Al. Your name is Al from now on. We go even further. Since you have bees in your name, we call you Bundy. <laughs> Al Bundy. The jokes. Blew your mind with that one, didn't I? You never expected in a thousand years that B3, B6, B12 was going to somehow mutate into Al Bundy, did you? No, you never imagined it in a thousand years, but here you are. You're in Ginger Gaming Mentor stream, and your name has mutated into Al Bundy. I hope you're happy. At least you're married to Peggy Bundy. I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but you're married to Peggy Bundy. Vitamins <laughs> equal. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, Immortal King into the void. I'm just waiting on people to show up. I figure, uh, you know, just a couple minutes. It's uh, it's 5:04. We're not really that far into it, so I'm gonna wait a little, just a little bit. Uh, if you guys have any questions, though, feel free to ask. Today is all about barbarians. My teammates, I take them off. I take off of them, carry them, put them on my back sack. Wow, your back sack. Better watch out. You might be an Okampa. You know, in Star Trek, there was a a, a race of of, uh, of beings. They were called the Okampa, and and they had babies that way. They they had like a a back sack, and the baby like grew in the back sack. You might be an Okampa adopting kids. Might want to check that out. Bad news: Ocampus only lived for like seven years. So, <laughs> I know I'm dumb. Um, let's see. Let's try and stick to like not Act One and Two, since Beta was the Diablo Two Resurrected Beta was Act One and Two, and I really didn't want to just like roll around in Act One and Two. All right, so. Let's go ahead and start. We, we're already about eight or so minutes into the stream here, so I think I've waited long enough. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we're going to start out with is uh, the Barbarian's non-combat skills. So not a lot of characters in Diablo have non-combat skills. Um, in fact, I can't really think of very many non-combat skills on pretty much any of the characters. Um, they usually all have some kind of combat related use like telekinesis while it may not be very good is at least a kind of like a knockback skill or um, You know while vigor may not necessarily be meant to used in combat It certainly can be used to help you kite or to help you um, You know do things other than You know just just simply run around fast um, you know, you can you can use it to uh, enhance your teammates so that they can keep up with the battle and so forth and so on. But the barbarian he has a couple skills which are not combat related, and uh, and those skills are find potion and uh, and find item. Now you could say that the potions will eventually help you in combat, but the skill does nothing for you while you're actually in combat. In fact, using find potion while you're in the middle of combat would likely be a detriment. Unless you just really, really, really need some potions, and uh, and you've got a lot of dead bodies already laying around, but in that case, you've already used something else to kill those targets, and uh, and find item is another skill which doesn't have very much to do with combat. 
Um, it uh, it makes items pop out of corpses. Now, to give you guys an idea, um, of course I've got IK set on, and IK set breaks all my corpses. I forgot about that. Um, let's go to normal difficulty, shall we? I forgot that uh, that uh, IK has like the the worst effect on it as far as um, killing targets. It it uh, it causes them to shatter. It's a uh, freezes target effect, and uh, yeah, I can't use my find item with uh, with the freeze targets effect. It doesn't work that way. So let me grab anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, you sound good. Let's get you. All right. Well, what's up, Scott? Welcome to the party, sir. Hey, Noir Wrath. What's up, man? Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So, let me go uh, murder a couple things real quick, and I'm going to show you this uh, firsthand. So, the Barbarian has this very unique skill um, called Find Item. And uh, basically what it does is it's a chance to find an item from a corpse. And uh, the beautiful thing about Find Item is it goes off of your magic find. So uh, right now I have a level 22 find item with a 52% chance. So I go up to a corpse and I right click on it and we get uh, we get a club. And then right click on this one. Then we get nothing. Then we get some gold. We get a couple little items. But the thing, the thing that's very interesting about find item is that you can build a barbarian that has like massive amounts of magic find. More than would be ever capable of maintaining on any character in the game. Because... Because think about it, if you have a really large amount of magic find, like if you were to build like 2,000% magic find or something, good luck actually killing anything, right? I mean, you, you're probably wearing like all the worst equipment in the game, um, probably like a, 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 a six-isted crystal sword or some stupid thing like that, so you, you're not really doing damage so much as you are just, I have lots of magic find. Well... The Barbarian is an interesting class because he has an ability that allows him to use his magic find without needing to kill anything. And uh, and all you have to do is you just run around behind people and you just... And you just grunt at corpses. And it's, and it's absolutely beautiful. And things like rings pop out and swords and all sorts of stuff. And of course it depends on where you are and what level the monsters are that you're, you're, you're grunting at. Uh, because I do believe it still goes off of the monster's level. So here I am in Act 1 uh, normal, so as you can see we're getting chipped emeralds and uh, and regular rings and stuff. So so it's it's uh, it's kind of a, a silly place to do this. Um, you also have another interesting ability, which is the Find Potion ability. That's the other one I was talking about. And that one will pop potions out of the corpses. And it also depends on the monster's level. So so if you're um, using this on little low-level monsters, you're going to get low-level potions. But if you go up to, um, say for instance, Act 5. Let me go kill some monsters in Act 5. <laughs> I don't even know if my axe is good enough to kill monsters in Act 5. But we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, Scott said a hork barb works better with lots of magic find, but only in a party that is doing the killing. I mean, you could also technically go to like cow levels and stuff, Scott, um, and you could just item find all the cows after people kill them. Um, you know, you could you could do all sorts of stuff. Can you find potion on the same body you used to find item? I don't think so, but let's double check. How about that? Come here. Uh, I don't even know if I can kill them with this axe. I might have to go buy a better one. Yeah, let me let me go uh, see if Mr. Uh, Mr. Buttface over here has a better axe than the, the really crappy one that I'm currently using. I did buy it in Act 1 normal difficulty, after all. It doesn't have to be an axe. Ooh, he's got a ball. I like balls. Balls are nice. Oh, that one's got plus four to minimum damage. Oh, yes. Oh, beautiful, yes. Let us maul you to death. What's up, Sashimi Gate? And you just got here. We're, we're doing the Day of the Barbarian. So we're talking about barbarian skills. And we're having fun. All right. So we've got a couple monsters here that I've murdered. And uh, you'll notice that if I do find potion on these guys, they drop much better potions. 
They drop nice greater healing potions. So the so the find uh, potion um, does vary depending on the monster. And later on, when you get to the really high levels, you get a lot of full juvies, like a lot of full juvies. So if you want if you want to farm full juvies, uh, a fine potion barbarian is actually an excellent way to get this done because you can just walk into areas, you can just spam fine potion on stuff, and you'll get juvie after juvie after juvie. But you got to make sure you're doing this in uh, in like hell difficulty to get the juvies, the full juvies. Because it, uh, it it doesn't really work in normal difficulty, as you see. It's mainly, it's mainly just the regular potions. But you'll see, you'll still see the odd full juvie every now and then, which is nice. So as you can see, I used find potion on all these guys, and if I go to find item, I can't use find item on them. So so once you've used a find something on the corpse, you can't use the other find something. So it's uh, it's interesting. All right, so we're gonna go down here. I'm gonna kill some more. We're gonna we're gonna play just a little bit more around with this, and then we'll. And then we we'll use our little, little, little tanks. I also got another skill I want to show you, which also has to do with corpses, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit about this skill as well. It's probably a skill that is not as well received, and I think a lot of people just simply ignore that it exists. But let me say. Um, it's actually kind of a nice skill and uh, thank you for the for the bits there Scott it's always <laughs> I swear you put more little robots inside my little uh you see how many robots are inside my little tip jar guys let me look at all these little robots in here you know he's he uh, Scott is the main person who puts those little robots in there he loves he loves shoving his little robots in my tip jar apparently like when you tip somebody it automatically puts the uh the, the tip in the form of the emote that they use, which I always thought was pretty cool. And uh, if I like if I turn my tip jar off and I turn it back on real quick, um, you'll see all the little the little guys go in there. I always thought it was funny. I do this every now and then just for laughs. See all the little things come off and then the little robots fall in and the little chonchulas and everything. And sometimes one of them launches out like a freaking rocket. I don't even understand that one robot. He's gone. He's like in the stratosphere somewhere. <laughs> they just look like they want out. <laughs> All right, so um, I find item, find um, find potion, and uh, and the last one is Grim Ward, and we'll talk about that in a second. So let me use a couple more find potions, and then oh, I got another juvie. Nice, nice. And I'll go grab that. Shweek. We'll use our find item on some stuff. Let's see if we can get anything better than the crap that we found earlier. Now, of course, this character's not built for magic find. And if you were going to make a find item barbarian, my suggestion to you would definitely be to build magic find. That's the whole purpose. If you're going to do find item, definitely find item with magic find. Uh, now, the next thing that I want to show you is Grimward. So Grimward is a rather odd one. And uh, I'm going to say right off the bat that it doesn't work very well for the barbarian himself. So imagine, if you will, you're in a situation, you've got a group full of eight people. Maybe two out of your eight people are not very strong fighters. Um, they're weak, they don't have very good faster hit recovery, maybe their HP's kind of low, maybe they built their character as kind of like glass cannons, right? Well, you want to give them a safe place to stand. And that's kind of what this skill is, is you uh, you cast it, and uh, and when you cast it, you make this totem. And uh, and this little this little grim totem scares away everything within its radius, and it continues to scare away everything in its radius for as long as it lasts. And uh, and two one of the main two uses that you can use this for is you can make some little safe havens for your team members. So like as you're running along, you would just simply maybe pop one up, and um, and that would give your team members a place to stand. Some so you know like maybe like your Amazon or your sorceress. Or uh, maybe your necromancer, somebody who's weak who doesn't necessarily have the hit points to to get in there and do the fighting, but would like to, you know, still still DPS. Another use, which is which is a rather interesting one, is say you're fighting a monster who is a unique, elite, a boss, um, even Ubers, for instance, um, and you want to fight just the boss. Um, one of the interesting things that you can do with Grim Ward is since Grim Ward does not cause bosses to run away, it only causes minions to run away, um, you can basically go, go up to a boss, you find somebody like, uh, 
like this guy. So here's, uh, of course, these guys don't make corpses. That doesn't help me out. So let's say you wanted to fight Mr. Black Blister here by himself. I could make a uh, totem, and the only monster that can actually still approach me is the boss himself. So it's an interesting way that you can you can isolate elites. Um, other than that, I can't really think of a lot of other good uses for Grimward. Um, I think a lot of people would, would agree that making things run away isn't usually the best intention. Um, but it can be used as kind of like an oh crap skill. Because you can see it really works. Like it really makes things run away for a rather long period of time. And the radius is 16 yards at max, which is kind of weird. <laughs> he did not want to be in the tip jar. I didn't see that until just now. So, um, as you can see, though, it doesn't last forever, only about 40 seconds, and then once it's gone, all the monsters come back. Um, and, of course, you can also, you can always reapply it, and then once you reapply it, the monsters then run away again. Um, like I said, it's not going to make champions run away. It's not going to make elites run away. It's not going to make named monsters run away. It won't make bosses run away. Um, it's not going to make super uniques run away. So, there's a rather large number of monsters that are going to be just simply immune to it. Uh, but it will make minions of monsters run away. And um, say, for instance, you were in the Uber area, so Uber Tristram. And uh, I don't know if you guys know, but in Uber Tristram, tons and tons of monsters spawn. Ghosts spawn, um, you know, undead lords spawn, all sorts of creatures spawn all over the place all the time in, uh, in the, Uber, the Uber Tristram area. So, you know, an occasional grim, grim ward... Might not be a bad thing in uh, in Uber Tristram because it'll help to uh, to get things to run away from the boss, but the boss will stay there. He'll still fight you, so you can focus your attacks on the boss and not have to worry too much about the minions that are constantly spawning around you. Now, granted, this does mean you're going to need corpses to make the ward out of, so you're still going to have to kill the odd minion here or there to refresh the totem. Um, so that's that's completely up to you. And um, so now that we've covered those three non kind of like non-combat skills. Even though Grim, I think Grim Ward is more of a combat skill than a find item and find potion. But uh, it's definitely um, on the on the uh, the weird side. Now let's start going over the um the the main tree here for barbarian. And this is the tree you're going to be putting most of your points into um pretty much no matter what you build. And um and this is the the passives tree. So the combat masteries tree. Um, the combat mastery tree is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you have your uh, sword mastery, your axe mastery, your mace mastery, your polearm mastery, throwing mastery, and spear mastery. Now, uh, doesn't matter what you build, doesn't matter what which one of these combat skills you build, you're probably going to still build masteries. Um, and the reason why is because masteries have a huge bonus to your critical strike, which is double damage, your attack rating, and your damage. All right, so you have this um, this amazing ability to just massively improve the damage of a weapon without even applying any skill damage whatsoever. So you can literally walk out with like a regular hammer, and you can just start beating things. And, uh, and the damage of your hammer is already way higher than anyone else in the game is going to be able to make their, their weapon. Um, with, with only one exception, um, Assassin also has a mastery. She has Claw Mastery, which is very, very similar to the, uh, the Barbarian's Masteries. It, uh, it does the same thing, adds the attack, the damage, and the critical strike. And that's just uh, that's just me whacking things. You can actually build barbarians, believe it or not, with just masteries. So you can you can just like beef up all your masteries, and then you can like become a, a werewolf. There's actually a helmet that the barbarian gets access to that turns them into a werewolf. Um, I actually have that sitting around. Hold on, it's uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. it's on a barbarian, and no, nope, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Oh, there's Bull Cathos right there. Berserker set. Claglaws, Death Set, Tancreds. Unique special. What's that? Oh no, that's torches. Mm. Oh no. That's not what the want it. That's not it. 
probably all the way down here. Unique barb helms. Here we go. So the barbarian has a couple of really nice unique helmets. He's got the uh, the Ariat's face, which is pretty pretty darn amazing. And uh, I mean, you just look at that thing; it's it's freaking awesome. If you find yourself in Ariat's face, I definitely hold on to that. Um, there's also the Wolf Howl visor. This is the one I was talking about. So the Wolf Howl visor gives you plus six to Feral Rage, plus six to Lycanthropy, and plus six to Werewolf, and uh, literally just lets you turn into a werewolf. It's 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 really super cool. But the main thing about this though is you can't use your abilities. You can't use Whirlwind. You can't use Concentrate or Fury or anything like that. Um, so you have to use the actual like werewolf abilities. So, uh, so the kind of like the weird build that you go with with a wolf howl visor is you build up your mastery, obviously as as high as you possibly can, and then you build up your war cries to beef up your health and your and your skills and whatnot, and then you put on the wolf howl visor and you turn yourself into a uh, a werewolf and you start beating people with feral rage, which is pretty funny. So you're literally a a werewolf bear uh, barbarian, which is pretty cool. Um, he also gets Demon's Horn, Edge, Destroyer Helm, and then he also gets the, uh, the Halibird's Reign, which is pretty cool. Hey, right, let's go back to the Barbarian. It's a Barbarian. Okay, now that we don't have to do the uh, find item anymore, we can take off our, uh, our crappy hammer. Is it a hell effective as a barb that uses actives, or is it just a gimmick? Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure on that. We could always uh, always cheat it in and see uh, and see what it does. Um, I I've never actually played around with it myself. You know what? Give me just a second. I will uh, I will cheat it in to uh, to my barbarian. Won't take me but a couple clicks and some boops. And uh, and the and the thing is always yelling at me. The Diablo 2 directory cannot be found, even though I point it out every time. The Diablo 2 directory cannot be found. 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 <laughs> this program makes me angry. Like it, it, you literally point it to the to the directory every single time and every single time it just pretends the directory is not there it's like no no the directory is not there i don't know what you're talking about we don't have a directory no 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 who needs directories and half the time it even yells at me when i close the application i'm like uh, okay <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and put on our wolf howl helmet and uh so right now, we basically we have the ability to turn into a werewolf, which is pretty cool. Um, but what we want to do first is we want to go outside and we want to do our shouts, because you can't do any of the other skills while you are a werewolf. So we're going to F1, F2, F3, and then of course we get plus one to all skills for doing that. So we're going to do it again, and, uh, and then we're going to werewolf up. And then the only skill we have access to is Feral Rage. And this is hell difficulty, by the way. Now, the way Feral Rage works is the larger the orb gets, the uh, stronger the attack becomes. So right now I'm doing 3,295 damage. I would assume that if you were going to build this, though, you would probably build something a little bit more like a werewolf would build. So you actually... Um, the other do I play around with other player counts much? I mean, normally I'm playing online, old man stalker, but I mean, I guess I could throw it up to players eight. Let's do players eight, and uh, let's see how he does with uh, with players eight. In fact, let's take him somewhere a little bit more dangerous. No, a little more dangerous. Let's see if he can take on Eldritch. I mean, he's got kind of full Kai Ks because I had to take off the helmet, unfortunately. So he's not... It's not the best set in the world, IKs. And uh, it's not the best set in the world for a for a druid, either. Um, I don't know. This isn't the day of the druid. I really would li I like to hesitate to talk about druid stuff. But since he can turn into a werewolf, I guess we're okay. 
Um, you need to have a lot of IAS on the weapon itself to increase the attack speed of the uh, of the druid, and um, uh, something like a Tomb Reaver Cryptic Axe with some nice uh, enhanced enhanced damage IAS jewels on it would be better than IK Maul. Um, it would help him out a lot more. In fact, IK set in particular is just probably not good for this. I mean, he's certainly not taking any damage, um, which is which is a thing, I suppose. I mean, it seems like he's he's doing just fine in terms of you know tanking it and uh, and blocking the damage, but he's not dishing it out, and that just could simply be because he's not built correctly. I mean, I, he's got IK set on right now, and he doesn't have any rings or amulets. Um, and he's not using the full IK set either. He's only using, you know, the pieces of the set. And this is eight player Eldritch. So, I mean, I feel like he's doing all right. He could be, he could be doing better. I feel like he could be doing better. I mean, for something that, that is kind of a meme, uh, you know, being able to turn into a werewolf as a, as a, as a barbarian. It's a, it's kind of a, a good meme. All right, so let's go back to uh, to IKs here. Oh, you can take you can take the uh, helmet off after you transfer form. That's interesting. Interesting. But then you lose access to the skill. Oh no! Well, I guess yeah, you lose access to the skill. Yep, yep, yep. I can't even transform back because I took off the helmet. <laughs> I forgot about that. You need the skill to transform back. That's pretty funny. All right, so let's move on uh, from that. So, so, so that is one of the builds, I guess, that I, what I was trying to point out is that you would build if you wanted to be, you know, like pure masteries. It's definitely something that you would you would build pure masteries for because you can't use anything else. So the things that will still carry over are your passives and uh, and your shouts. So your shouts and passives will still will still have a big effect on your your character overall. And um, and honestly, if you're going to play a barbarian, um, you're going to pick one of these and you're going to roll with it. Um, and do keep in mind that polearm mastery and spear mastery are split. So you don't have like a generalized category for that. Um, like a lot of people don't, I think, I think don't even recognize the fact that some polearm weapons um, and some spear weapons do not count as the same type. So like the halberd is a polearm and the pike is a spear. Uh, the war scythe is a polearm. You see down there where it says polearm class, normal attack speed. Um, so keep that in mind as you're choosing the uh, mastery that you want here between spear and polearm that that they're not the same um i was thinking <laughs> i i think i remember building one time and i was like i'm gonna build a polearm barb and then like the weapon that i had in mind was a was a spear and i was like oh and uh and like i had like a really nice hat that had like plus three polearm mastery on it <laughs> and it just didn't work out for me Um, old man stalker, not really. Like I don't really feel like there's any one class that's the best. Uh, Diablo, if you, I mean, if you're if you talk about PvP, PvP is more like rock paper scissors in my opinion. It's like you know, rock beats rock beats scissors, but scissors beats paper, and paper beats rock. Like it's more of a situation of like this class is is a little bit better than this one, but that class is easily beaten by this one, and that class is easily easily beaten by this one, and so forth and so on. And um, and people come up with strategies to defend themselves against certain classes, but um, but for the most part, it's 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 really just like a rock paper scissors thing, and it really depends on what you're trying to do as well. Like I really feel like each character is good at something, like like really good at some particular aspect of the game, whether it be single target damage, whether it be AOE damage, whether it be tanking, whether it be um, you know, kiting, whether whatever it happens to be, each class has its own like really good specialty, and um, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's an, it's an interesting question, but I don't think there's any objective best class in the game. And uh, let's see, 
So in the Masteries tree, besides the actual weapon Masteries, we also have uh, a couple other Masteries, which are really nice. Uh, most of these are one-point wonders, so you just put one point into them and you kind of move on. And uh, and the first one is increased stamina. So not a lot of people are super, super crazy about beefing up their stamina to, to like the ridiculous heights in the world, but putting one point to this is, is hardly a bad thing, especially when the next one after it is increased run walk speed. <laughs> that is objectively the worst. I don't really think so either, old man stalker. It's all about how you build them. Um, and then we also have over here, we've got Iron Skin, and Iron Skin is very, very straightforward and increases your defense. Um, and defense is specifically about trying to keep yourself from getting hit. So the higher your Iron Skin, the higher your defense is going to be, and, uh, and the less chance that a monster will be able to actually connect a hit. And, um... And speaking of defense, Barbarians have a skill that completely negates defense. It's called Berserk, and it sets your defense to zero whenever you attack with it. Uh, probably not the best skill in the world, but uh, but if you run out into the, the, the moor and you, and you attack with Berserk, your defense literally goes to zero when you hit the attack button, which means you're going to get hit a lot. And of course, as soon as you stop attacking, your defense goes back up. Um, so an interesting skill there, and definitely one that if you were going to build, if you were going to try and build a, a Berserk Barbarian, you definitely would probably not put very many points into Iron Skin, because it would it would be kind of useless for you. Um, and then next on the tree is Natural Resistance. Again, very self-explanatory. It gives you plus to your resistances, all your resistances, in fact. And uh, there is no other class in the game that has something like this. Um, I mean, uh, Assassins have Fade, which is a usable skill that increases your resistances. But, um, but that actually has to be toggled, and it does run out. This is an ability that literally, when you put a point into it, just simply increases your resistances by that number forever. And uh, as long as you have the certain number of points in it, you get a pretty nice bonus. Um, and the really interesting thing about this, this skill is that it allows you to build differently. So for most characters, they have to keep a pretty decent amount of resistances on their equipment. And, um, you know, whether it be in the form of a shield that has really nice resistances or resistances spread out over all of their equipment or, like, a plus two amulet like Mara's that has, like, plus 25 to all resistances. Um, you know, they have to work in all these resistances on all their equipment so much that they have to sacrifice other stats for them. Uh, but the Barbarian has a little bit of an easier time there. Not only does he get huge buffs to his, his weapon damage, his critical strike, his attack rating, his damage, without ever actually putting a point into a skill, he also gets a huge bonus to his natural resistance and his, his defense... So that he's just higher than everyone else in those terms. So that he can focus his equipment more on the damage side of things. More on like the crushing blow, the uh, the magic find, uh, you know, whatever it is that he's looking to do. He, he doesn't have to put as much attention on his resistances, which is very, very nice. Now, that is the passive tree. And the passive tree gains huge bonuses from plus to all skills. So, as you can imagine, if you're a Barbarian, you usually have at least one Mastery. And uh, I usually wouldn't recommend going two Masteries unless you're going to go, like, Axe slash Throwing. I think that might be the only one that I'd probably duel. Uh, just simply because you can build a really nice Axe Barbarian that also throws Axes. So, you'd have, you would have, you know, like, Max Frenzy with, like, Max Throwing Axe. So, you could, you know, maybe, like, you got your frenzy on one hand and you got your throwing on the other. And so you're kind of like a melee slash ranged barbarian. But I think that might be the only thing, time I can think that dual masteries would be a good idea. Um, and then, of course, you're going to have one point into all the ones below. So, any plus the skills you get is going to increase your damage, it's going to increase your resistances, it's going to increase your defense, it's going to increase your run walk speed, it's going to increase your stamina, it's going to increase your, your crit percent. You know, just really, really nice to have plus to all skills on a Barbarian. <laughs> yeah, it's going to look really cool in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Alright, so next on the tree, um, on the on the Barbarian, we have the War Cries. So we've already went over the, uh, the find items, so we don't got to worry about those. And um, next we're going to go over the the shouts here, so the, or the, the cries, as people call them. All 
All right, so the first cry we're going to go over is uh, one called Howl. And uh, Howl can be an early game saver. So imagine you're you're a little low-level level two barbarian, and, uh, and you get yourself into a bad situation where you're surrounded by a whole bunch of monsters. Um, you throw off a, a Howl, and, uh, and you can save your life. Um, it's just as simple as that. There's, there's really not much other use for it other than that, other than to just just get a quick howl off and uh, and cause the monsters to run away. Now, when you first level it up, it does have a um, a much lower like um, distance. Like right now, it's at enemies run for up to 96 yards, and enemies run for up to 27 seconds. So it's pretty ridiculous right now. Like it really makes them run away for a long time. And, uh, and the level 1 Howl is not going to do that, but it is going to save your life if you're in trouble. So if you're like a little low-level barbarian and you've got, your, you've got your bash on your main hand and you're bashing things and you get yourself in trouble, you know, you can, you can tag off your, your Howl to save your life. Now, keep in mind, though, that uh, just like Grimoire that we were talking about earlier, Howl is not going to protect you from... Elites. So if you're right in the middle of fighting the Smith, which as I've seen happen before, and and you throw off your little howl hoping he'll run away, um, he's not going to, you know, because because of course um, runaway effects or, or or terror effects do not work on uh, anything but normal monsters. All right. So next on the list is another interesting ability, and this one is uh, taunt. So uh, taunt is actually required to be built for certain skills. So if you are going to build frenzy, uh, it gives eight percent damage per level. So you're probably going to build taunt. Um, I think taunt is for one other. I can't remember. Why can I not remember? Ah, uh, yes, war cry. War cry uh, gives six percent damage per level to. Uh, to that skill, or taunt gives six percent damage level to war cry. All right, so taunt—it's a very interesting ability. Um, as you can see, it says targets damage negative fifty-three uh, percent and targets attack negative fifty-three percent. But on top of that, um, it is also a taunt, just like in an MMO. So if you taunt somebody, the monster will attack you and no one else. Um, it is a very like MMO kind of ability. Um, there's not a lot of MMOs in the in MMO abilities in Diablo, I think. Um, you know, like like straight up heals or um, or abilities to taunt monsters or force taunts uh, or things like that. In general, you know, the game doesn't have a lot of that. But um, but taunt is definitely a straight up like tank move. Um, you can walk up to a monster and you just simply say, "Hey, you know, you, hey, you." Fight me instead, like you. Your mom's a hoe, and uh, and the monsters like look. You can't talk about my mom that way, and then the, the monster comes over and and tries to tell you, you know, what's what. If <laughs> my girlfriend said weirdest story ever. So uh, so you can you can literally spam taunt too. Um, so you can spam it on everything nearby. And, uh, and that negative damage and the negative attack actually is kind of useful. Um, you know, obviously you're not going to be spamming it, and obviously it doesn't work on champions. So here we have a group of champions, and I can't taunt them. So, kind of kind of sucks that it doesn't work on champions. Uh, I guess just like the Howl doesn't work on champions, they don't want this one to work on champions either. I mean, the end game sets that made you glow like this were were the end game sets until they started introducing other things into the game. Um, that's the reason why they became non end game sets. It's because they they put more into the game. So the rune words, um, like the later uniques that they added after these sets were added, um, there was a lot of items that got put into the game afterwards that uh, that made these items outclassed. And uh, these sets are still pretty good sets. They just don't hold a candle to, uh, you know, some of the other, like, rune words and things that have come out since. 
Um, they're still very nice sets to just throw on a, a barbarian and just, just so he has the ability to kill things in hell. Um, and then once you've got, you know, better gear to start upgrading him. All right, so taunt is very interesting, and it is required as a as a uh, a synergy for two skills. And then we have battle cry, and uh, battle cry is a fearsome cry that decreases enemies' defense and defense rating and damage. So it lowers their defense and uh, decreases the damage that they do. Now, lowering defense is actually a pretty huge thing, and there is a similar skill on paladin called conviction, which lowers defense by a huge percentage and you'll find that lowering a monster's defense can really have a huge difference on uh, how many times you can hit them and how much attack rating you need so if you were to build a barbarian around war cry um, you could definitely hit everything um, as you can see it also works on champions there is a champion in this pack and the champion has I'm pretty sure has the effect yes it's always a little hard to tell, especially when you have a whole bunch of monsters together. But there is the champion, and he is, in fact, Warcried. So he has, like, basically no defense whatsoever. Now, the only downside to building um, a negative defense character is that um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work in PvP. I remember trying it one time on my Paladin, uh, going out with Conviction, and uh, I couldn't hit anything. <laughs> I could not hit anything. In spite the fact that I had fairly good attack rating for hell combined with conviction, and I think like I had a 95% chance to hit everything in hell difficulty. Um, I even had like a 95% chance to hit like Uber Mephisto. But I guess uh, since the negative defense rating doesn't work in PvP, you know, it doesn't doesn't really help you there. And as you can see, it also has a very short radius. Just, just extremely tiny radius. So to get to actually activate it, you've got to be like just like in their face. Just all the way in their face. Alright, so next on the list we have Warcry. And uh, Warcry is pretty darn sweet. Uh, we're going to go to a higher level area because I really want to show this one off. And uh, look here, sirs, stop. Look here. Oh, you're immune to physical. Look at you. Aren't you sweet? He's so cute. Well, I can kind of show it off here, I guess. And as you can see, they're stunned for a pretty long time. Warcry spam is a really interesting way to uh, to hold down monsters, and uh, and it works really well. But obviously, you can't stun uniques. So Mr. Treehead Woodfist here, who's immune to physical, is uh, is not affected by my Warcry spam. It's about to ruin my whole career. Oh yeah, that's another thing that I should probably cover real quick. So um, you might say to yourself, well, if he had a uh, chance to proc Amplify Damage, um, he would be able to take out that, uh, that Treehead Woodfist who's immune to physical damage without issue, right? Well, the answer to that question is no. Um, because, and this is important, proc effects do not work on Whirlwind. Don't ask me why, but they do not work on Whirlwind. <coughs> so things like chance to cast Amplify Damage or chance to cast Fireball or um, like chance to, uh, to to cast Frost Nova, they don't work. Um, so if you if you are hoping to build like a Whirlwind Barbarian who has Amp Damage, it doesn't. It's not going to work on you. Um, now, I don't have any amp damage proc, otherwise that would be nice. Um, there's also a proc on this right now. Um, the uh, IK set has a chance to cast, I believe it's Enchant. I can't remember exactly. Man, Treehead Woodfist is about to, to destroy my life. Treehead, why are you so rude, sir? Why are you so rude to me? Tree head, I will concentrate you to death. How about that? That's right. Nah. 
Look here, skeleton archer. I just killed Treehead Woodfist. What'd you expect you were going to do? <laughs> yeah, I'm still on Player's 8. I haven't changed it back. Wow, well, plus one masteries. Replenishes quantity. 10% increased attack speed. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right, so where were we? Uh, Warcry. So Warcry is a very interesting ability uh, for its ability to stun monsters. Um, a lot of classes have AoE stuns. Uh, the Druid has Shockwave. The um, the uh, Assassin has Mind Blast. The Barbarian has, obviously, uh, Warcry. And then um, I think there's one more. Who, who am I missing? Uh, the, uh, the Druid also has uh, tw Twisters, which is a stun. So he has two stuns. Druid's kind of OP with his stuns. Um, nobody else can stun, can they? Just want to make sure. The Paladin has uh, Shield Bash. That's right, Shield Bash. I'm going to play Necromancer, Gerudo. Necromancer. And uh, are you named after the um, the goddess of wind from uh, Final Fantasy? Gerudo, is that is that uh, is that your your your? I guess um, I'm, as soon as I read your name, I was like, oh, I, I saw green and feathers, and I've killed her so many times on like Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV and Final Fantasy VII and either that or from L O Z. All right, so we've covered all the combat masteries, we've covered all the war cries, and uh, and the next thing we're gonna cover is the actual attack skills there was a hurl bat there yes there was a hurl bat i saw well S stop being rude to me i am not fully geared okay <laughs> All right, so the first skill we've got on the list is Bash. Very, very nice skill. Um, it's one of the first skills that you get, and it knocks the target back, and it's very, very abusive. Um, I think you'll find early in the game that uh, that Bash is just a really fun skill just to be mean to monsters with. I mean, you find a good monster, and you start bashing him in the face, and the monster begs you and pleads for you to stop, and, and you don't, and you just keep bashing them <laughs> until they hit the wall. And then, and then once they hit the wall, you just keep bashing them into the wall, and maybe you're not really doing very much damage, but the monster can't really fight back because you're just, you're just bashing them to death. And uh, and I think a lot of people uh, usually end up using bash early on, just simply because it's 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 a nice skill. It's got it's got good damage. Uh, the knockback kind of prevents monsters from being able to fight you. And you can also kind of like swap out of it, so you can have like a regular attack on your right click, and then you know you can bash every now and then, and you can even just stand here and you can just bash monsters away from you in a circle and just keep bashing them around. It's it's a fun little skill, and it does have many um, uses on the tree. So if you're trying to build, for say for instance, a uh, double swing barbarian, double swing requires bash. Uh, it's a 10% synergy bonus, and actually, believe it or not. Can you make a storm shield barbarian? Um, you can you can build a shield barbarian militant. I think a lot of people prefer to build like two-handed or or dual wield barbarians, but you could certainly build a uh, a shield barbarian. It's not a, it's not a, any anything bad about it. I don't know if it works, but I could swear I've seen a Bash Barbarian using two shields. It sounds like something I did in Final Fantasy 1. Probably uh, a Summoner Necromancer Gerudo. Um, you're, you're asking me what I'm probably going to build on launch, and it's probably going to be a Summon Necromancer. I pretty much guaranteed. That's That's, that's probably it. I'm just chasing people around and bashing them to death. I don't even care. All right, so next on the tree is double swing, and to show you double swing, I have to switch to to double weapons. You have, you have to have two weapons when you're using double swing, and double swing is this really nice just just two swings. It's it's very simple and it's very straightforward, and it works very well. 
you literally just swing both weapons very fast at a target and hit them, and and that's about it. And uh, and it's kind of like kind of reminds me of Zeal in a way because it's a very fast attack, very nice attack. You definitely get a lot of, of hits off, and of course my weapons are absolute garbage. But please don't uh, please don't judge me based on my my crappy weapons. But as you can see, double swing just has nice nice fluid movement. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed in Diablo 2 Resurrected Beta, but double swing was horribly bugged, and it it was slow and it was awful, and I hated it. And uh, and I wanted to to to, to get my money back. Uh, from where I get, no, no, not gonna get my money back, but I wanted to get my skill points back, that's for sure. Um, and then the next skill after double throw is, I mean, double swing is double throw. Now, the interesting thing about this whole line, and let me go to town for a second so I don't gotta worry about these monsters, is that they all kind of synergize with each other. So, if you're building double swing, you have to build bash, all right? If you build double throw, you have to build double swing. And if you build Frenzy, you also have to build Double Swing. So it's like a, this whole line here is kind of like linked together. Now the interesting thing about this line though is that if you build Double Swing, Double Swing gets no damage bonus. So the only thing that levels up as you level up Double Swing is the attack rating and the negative mana cost. So it goes down in mana cost as you level it up. Um, but the damage from Double Swing actually comes from Bash. So to get that 200% damage, you have to level up Bash. And the same thing goes for Double Throw. So to level up Double Throw, to get that 160% extra damage on Double Throw, you have to level up Double Swing. And it's just, it's just really weird. So putting points into Double Swing doesn't do you any good. Um, you have to put points into Bash to get the damage. And putting points into Double Throw doesn't do you any good, really. You have to put points into Double Swing to get the damage. So if you build Double Throw, you usually end up having Double Swing, and so your bar usually ends up looking something like this. You've got Double throw, double Swing on one hand and Double Throw on the other, and you do a little bit of melee, a little bit of, little bit of throwing, kind of like a combination of both. And um, it seems like a heavy investment for most dual wield builds a little bit I mean it depends on how you build them <laughs> Noir said same double swing was so bad it ruined barbarian for me and beta yeah it was pretty bad um, I reported it I hope you reported it too in the bug reporter because uh, because it was it was pretty awful it was pretty bad. Um, so double double th swing double throw and frenzy do kind of all synergize together which is nice um, so let's take a look at double throw. So as you can see, double throw is very nice, and it's very similar to double swing. It's pretty much just a nice, fluid double throw. Now the only bad thing about both double throw and double swing is that if you run out of your um, axes, or your one of your axes breaks you can no longer use either of the abilities. So the abilities are now no longer usable at all. And uh, it's, I always thought that was a little odd. I always thought they, they should have at least let you at least swing one weapon or throw one weapon. But no, they, it's, it has to be two. Um, and, that's, and that's an interesting thing. So dual wield barbarians have to be two weapons. Now, Frenzy, the next ability, is probably the most fun, and uh, and believe it or not, you can use Frenzy in combination with Double Throw and Double Swing and for some very nice hilarity. Um, the only downside of Frenzy is that the damage bonus that you get from Frenzy does not transfer to Double Throw or Double Swing, but the run speed and the attack speed do. All right, so, so let's take a look at Frenzy. Uh, that's not friendly. Uh, and let's take a look at double swing. All right. So we're going to go and we're going to attack something. And as I attack something, you're going to notice these little wisps start to form around me. And these little wisps are really cool. So we attack and we get these little wisps. And the wisps get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we can run around like a freaking cheetah. I mean, just ridiculous. But as you can see, it doesn't last that long. It only lasts for a short period of time. However, if while we're running around, we tag something. So just one quick hit, it refreshes the effect. So we just got to make sure we tag something as we're running around to refresh the effect. And if we don't find anything to tag, then the effect runs out. 
Now, the beautiful thing about Frenzy is not only can you use Frenzy itself, but you can also tag it together with Double throw, double Swing. So this is Double Swing when you have Frenzy at max. Look how fast Double Swing is when you have Frenzy at max. So really, really awesome speed bonus there. So the speed bonus from Frenzy can be used to, to beef up the speed of other abilities. And um, take, for instance, Double Throw. So let's get uh, a full Frenzy here. Hold on. Get this nice and charged up. And then let's run away and throw our axes. And look at the freaking speed of these axes. It's ridiculous. Look at how many freaking axes we could just chuck through the air. And then as soon as our, our, uh, our frenzy goes down, we're back to normal speed. So it's a very interesting way that you can build a double swing or a throwing barbarian is to also build frenzy which in turn beefs up the speed and then you can just you don't have to keep attacking with frenzy you just need to maintain that um that speed bonus and you only really have to attack a certain number of times with frenzy to get your speed bonus up and then every time after is just a man um you know is just maintaining it and of course the beautiful thing about frenzy is even if you don't want to use it as a skill, I mean, who doesn't want to run around like a freaking cheetah? Who doesn't run around and run around like a... Look at this cheetah running around. <laughs> What's up, Escalon? What's up, Jay Banana? The things that make me laugh because of horrible cast speed is Enigma on a barb. I thought barbarians had the same uh, breakpoints as a sorceress. All right, so we've covered the dual wielding side of the tree, right? Very, very interesting abilities. Um, all three of these are dual wield abilities. Um, I don't think so, Rikolov, actually. I don't think so. Sacred armors are, are very rare to drop. They uh, They don't drop very often. So next we have uh, Stun, which is a duration of 9.6 seconds. And um, I'm not really sure why you would build this over Warcry. Warcry is an AoE stun, and uh, and Stun is a, is, an, is a single target stun. But I guess if you were going to build into that tree, like maybe you were building... Uh, what is it? I was trying to remember the skill it synergizes with. Does it not have any synergy? Really? I thought I had at least one synergy. It does not have one synergy? Man. That's rough. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Okay, so Bash, that's right. It synergizes with Bash. So if you wanted to build Bash, you would also build Stun. Um, so Stun is an interesting ability because it literally just stuns things. I mean... Nice 9.6 second stun. And as you can see, the monsters are just stuck there. They can't really do much of anything. I mean, I, I, I don't really know if I would build that as opposed to Warcry, which, um, which is an AoE stun. Obviously, if I can stun, like, an entire group of monsters for a little bit shorter duration, as opposed to one monster for slightly longer... It kind of feels like to me that Warcry would be kind of the more advantageous one there. But I guess if you were doing PvP, where PvP generally is one target, as opposed to, you know, um, PvM, which is generally more than one target, then I guess, I guess that would make sense. Uh, but at the same time, Warcry doesn't seem like it has to worry about hitting the target. Warcry doesn't seem like it has to worry about bypassing defenses. Whereas, I'm assuming, stun does, so you have to actually hit the target. Warcry seems like it might be a little bit easier to spam on a PvP person than, than stun. I remember a unique called Ribcracker... Um, yeah, Ribcracker is actually really, really amazing for druids. Um, what you do is you upgrade it. You find an ethereal one, you upgrade it twice, or is it once? I can't remember. You want to get it to the hell version, and then you zod it. 
and uh, apparently it's an absolutely excellent weapon for um for for druids werewolf barbarians and uh, and bear barbarians i mean uh, werewolf barbarians i mean well i mean it could work on a werewolf barbarian but you'd probably be much better off with like a pole axe or something like that um <laughs> werewolf druids and bear barbarians this is the day of the barbarian after all i have barbarians on the mind don't judge me <laughs> don't judge me Barbarian only for uber kills and PvP with Enigma no more. I'm... What? What if I want to play my Barbarian and just have fun magic finding? How about that, Morbid Seder? I want to be an item find Barbarian and I want to run around grunting at corpses. What are you going to say to that? I'm going to grunt at corpses for days. All the grunting. It's 0 0.15 speed for normal magic find. I have no clue what that means, Morbid. Decrepify. All right, so uh, so next on the list is Concentrate, and Concentrate is an attack that is not interruptible and improves attack rating and defense. So basically, um, a, an attack that is non-interruptible is just an amazingly interesting attack. I mean, you imagine an ability that literally, no matter what a monster does, they can't stop you from making the attack, or a player, honestly, for that matter. And... Um, the uh, there are a couple abilities like this in the game. Um, so, for instance, Smite is a uninterruptible attack, as well as um, moo 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 moo. So many, so many. Uh, hello, hello bar cows. Uh, so the uh, paladin also has a skill called concentration, and concentration has the ability to pr make you uninterruptible, but it's a twenty percent chance. Whereas uh, concentrate makes you completely uninterruptible, and uh, and basically you just you, you can just go in here and you start whacking stuff. It's uh it's actually really nice to have an uninterruptible attack because that means that you won't have things like faster hit recovery, um, stuns, or um, or blocking animations or things like that taking you out of the attack. And um, and as a melee character who's in there all the time, it's actually very nice to have that sort of thing. And, uh, let's see here. And as you can see, um, it gives you a nice defense bonus of 360%. So, uh, so let's go up to something, let's give it a whack, and let's take a look at our defense. So we've got 8,465, and we need a, a, a friendly target here. So now we've got 16,000. So it's only when you're actually using the skill, though. Just the same way that Berserk reduces your defense when using the skill. So it's a very brief, very, very brief defense bonus. Only during the time of the swing, essentially. And um, same thing goes for Berserk. Berserk is also a very brief reduction, but it's a, but it's a huge reduction. A very brief huge reduction. So when you attack a monster with Berserk, you go down to zero. Which is a pretty large decrease likely to get you killed um i don't know if there's actually been any like super successful berserk barbarians um i do know that they do a massive amount of damage and a lot of their damage is actually magic damage but having zero defense would certainly make things a little difficult as you can see it does it does make it so that anything just about can hit you and uh and even monsters in Act 3 that wouldn't normally be able to even touch you can uh, can now suddenly hit you with every single attack that they make, uh, which is kind of a big deal. So I'm not really sure exactly what kind of builds um, work with Berserk. I've, uh, I've never actually researched it myself, and uh, I think the zero damage thing on Berserk has always kind of turned me off. 
But um, but it does have some nice synergies, um, like for instance with Frenzy, if you build Berserk, you get 20% uh, magic damage added to your Frenzy. So that means you get that that nice, um, kind of like unresistible damage. Magic damage is, is generally unresistible in most targets. There's, uh, there's a couple magic immunes in uh, Act 2, and there's like one magic immune that spawns in the, uh, in the Bale throne room. But for the most part, it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, I was thinking kind of that too, Noir, is that it's like a raw damage sponge kind of a build. So you would need lots and lots of HP uh, to be able to take the hits, and then you would need lots and lots of mana heal or life, you know, life steal to be able to regenerate that those hits, which uh, which I think is, is kind of important there. Um, then we have two skills, which one of them is more of a, like, let's get around ability. And let me go ahead and uh, refresh my shouts here. Round, 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 I get around, ooh. I mean, I imagine with Berserk, you'd want both. So as you can see, one of the interesting things that Leap has is it's a knockback. So everything where you land gets knocked back, and you can really kind of abuse the knockback ability by just kind of spamming the Leap, and everything just kind of gets stuck. I have actually seen some Barbarians save the day with these, um, just simply because... You can go into an area where there's a lot of dangerous monsters and all the monsters are trying to murder everything and nobody can survive in there. But the Barbarian, he can just do this little leap spam trick and uh, and everything is stuck against the wall, you know, essentially away from the Barbarian. Um, I've seen it work in Bale's throne room and several other places and it's very interesting. Um, it's definitely an interesting way to get around. You know, not a lot of characters have the ability to cross gaps. But the, uh, but the Barbarian is one of them. Escalon said, Barbarian was my first class that got to hell difficulty, and I got destroyed. Interesting. All right, so the next one on the list, besides Leap, which, which as you can obviously see, Leap is good for getting around. And uh, you know what? Let's let's show off Leap just a little bit more. Let's go to Arcane Sanctuary. And uh, Arcane Sanctuary is definitely an interesting place for Leap. So you know, if you're in here, you can really skip around with Leap. I mean, it's definitely worth one point if you if you're going to put at least at least one point into it. It's nice to be able to skip over certain areas. Um, Certainly, like, early game, especially when you're trying to farm things, like maybe you're trying to farm Duriel or something. I don't know why you would farm Duriel. But it just as an, as, an, as an interesting thing, it would definitely be a lot easier if you could leap around an Arcane Sanctuary to get to, uh, you know, the Summoner a little bit quicker. Um, now, Leap's... Leap's... Um, I don't, I don't want to say Radius. It says Radius there, which just seems wrong. Um, Leap's distance increases with its um, its level. So when you first start out Leap, it doesn't go very far. Um, it has a very short a very short distance that it can leap. Um, it's not until you get a couple points into it that it really starts to uh, to shine. And um, and at max, it's 18 yards, which is a pretty pretty far distance. Um, it's important to note, though, that like early on, when you're only level, only have one level leap and no plus to skills, it's only going to get you like this distance. So it's going to get you one little tiny, little little tiny bump. Um, you're not going to be able to do these giant leaps like I'm doing that go halfway across the map. Farm Duriel for TP scrolls. That's a good idea. And he is the best town portal scroll dropper in the game. Like, bar none. No one drops town, scrolls of town portal like Duriel. Ooh, buddy. I'm actually, I was actually on stream one day, and we killed Duriel. I think it was like one of the ladder resets or something. And uh, and we killed Duriel, and he dropped six scrolls of town portal. I mean, literally, six scrolls of town portal. And nothing else. 
and we were just like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, I know Duriel's Garage Drops are not great, but that seems a little subpar. All right, so the next skill is Leap Attack, and Leap Attack, as you can see, does a massive amount of damage when it's maxed out. So 1,110% damage. It's, it's very similar to the way that uh, Paladin's Charge works. So I don't know if you guys have ever used uh, Paladin's Charge. Paladin's Charge has a huge, buku amount of damage, but it's all focused on one hit, and, and it has attached to it a method of getting you to the target. So with charge, you know, you run really fast to the target and then you smash into them. Um, with leap, you jump really far and you get to the target. Now, of course, you can use um, this ability to get around as well, but I think leap is cheaper on the mana cost. Yeah, so leap is only two and uh, and leap attack is nine. And uh, this character is not properly geared for, for any of this stuff that I'm doing right now. Uh, yes, Noir. I think I've talked about it several times in um, in on stream before. It's uh, if you'd like to type it into chat, though. I mean, feel free. It's uh, it's a pretty uh, pretty well known thing. The, uh, the glitching Andariel. So as you can see, it's it's a really kind of a long leap, and then you as soon as you land, you hit the target for a massive amount of damage. Um, you really need like a better weapon than IK Mall for this. And it gets a little annoying listening to him go here, 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 here. He's not even leaping. He's still gonna make the leap noise. He's not leaping, but he's gonna make the leap noise. I want this to sink in. I really want this to sink in. So there you go. <laughs> All right, so next we have uh, Whirlwind. And uh, Whirlwind has no synergies. It has no synergies whatsoever. And Whirlwind is a very weird skill. Um, if you've never used Whirlwind, um, I'll take some time to explain some of the mechanics of Whirlwind. Um, number one, when you right-click, it will take you to your destination. Um, I don't know if you noticed there, but my potion slots were redded out while I was in the middle of my Whirlwind. And if you look at my uh, equipment slots, they also read out in the middle of the Whirlwind. You're not allowed to do anything in the middle of the Whirlwind. To, uh, to really put a point on this, as fine a point as I possibly can, um, n not only are you not allowed to do just about anything while you're in the middle of a Whirlwind, you're not even allowed to die. You're not even allowed to die while you're in Whirlwind. So you, if you die in the middle of a whirlwind, like if you if you reach zero HP, your character will not stop whirlwinding until the whirlwind is over, until it is until it would normally be over, and then when the whirlwind ends, as a natural result of the skill ending, then your character dies. So you you are prevented from doing just about anything while you are in the whirlwind. Um, you cannot proc skill effects. Um, you cannot do a lot of things. In fact, I actually did a little bit of, uh, of research on this beforehand because I just wanted to make sure that I, I remembered everything correctly. And um, let's see here. Whirlwind will not stop until, you're, until you have reached your destination, ground or monster. If you have clicked on a monster that is fleeing, you will chase the monster down until it stops fleeing. So let's let's play around with that idea, shall we? Uh, didn't we have something that made monsters run away for a really long period of time? And uh, and let's click whirlwind on them, shall we? Hello. Let's pick something faster. <laughs> let's put something faster. So generally with Whirlwind, it's best just to click on the other side of the monsters on the ground instead. In fact, if I remember correctly, the most optimal way of using Whirlwind is a triangle. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go like 
Uh, let's see if I can do this correctly. So, down, up, over, down, up, over. Um, it's called the like the dance of death or something. If I I I don't know if I'm remembering these terms correctly. It's been so long since I've really played a whirlwind barbarian. Um, but I believe this was called the dance of death. It's basically a little triangle attack. So you just you just constantly keep doing this little triangle, and uh, and it does it does a pretty huge amount of damage. You kind of like focus all the monsters in a nice little nice little circle, and uh, or a little triangle, actually. And um. Oh, it's actually mentioned here. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. Barbarians wielding weapons with slow whirlwind speeds should try to keep their whirls very short so as to take advantage of the 4th and 8th frame free hits. Hold down the whirlwind button and hover the cursor just right after the place where the whirlwind starts. The free hits are taken and almost immediately after it, the whirlwind stops. Then, since the whirlwind button is being pressed, the, a new whirlwind starts and we get back the free hits of frames 4 and 8. Keep doing this in a triangular pattern by using the technique to minimize the time under which your weapon slows down whirlwinds. This tactic is used by many barbarians online and is nicknamed the Dance of Death. Uh, this is because you keep spinning so close to the target, not zigzagging in lines back and forth. So yeah, the Dance of Death, as I remembered correctly. All right, so so basically, what it is is you're you're trying to keep your whirlwinds as short as possible, and that's why you're going in this in this little triangle pattern. So you're you're going up, down, left, right, just just doing your little triangle. You're just doing your little Tasmanian devil thing, and uh, and it's very interesting. Nice Baba day. <laughs> What's up, Life that you adore? Welcome, welcome. Come over here in the triangle of death. How about that? You guys like triangles? I got triangles for days. I got isosceles. I got equilateral. I got scalene. Heck, who am I kidding? Most of my triangles are probably scalene. I really doubt I'm making any equilateral triangles. I'm going to tell you that much. It's probably mostly scalene with a couple isosceles. <laughs> That's some math jokes for you right there. Didn't ever think you'd hear a math joke on a gaming stream, did you? Baba. Ooh, an Avenger card. Ow, you guys hurt. Why are you so rude? Obtuse. You said obtuse. I knew I was remembering the names wrong. I knew it. What's this? What's this? One to combat skills, two to natural resistance, two to shout. Hmm. Um, let's see. I trying to make sure I didn't forget anything, uh, and it's important not to forget anything. And there's so much to cover, so... Let's cover one last thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the shouts themselves. All right, so the Barbarian has these amazing shouts. And uh, and if you get your Barbarian leveled up really nice, you can, uh, you can make a very interesting character, which is basically a character you bring into games, and you shout at people and you leave. So, <laughs> so you get 460 seconds on, uh, on shout. You get 470 seconds on uh, on uh, battle orders and 445 seconds on battle command. And then when you actually use them, uh, battle command increases the level of your skills, so you get a little bit more time. So 455 seconds, 480, and uh, 470. Yeah, yeah. So you're looking at a bare minimum of 455 seconds. And usually you want to um, use them one more time because um, because battle orders brings up the level of all of them. So it's important to use your battle orders and then cast it again because the uh, the level does affect everything at least one time. Uh, B3 said, oh, I meant to ask this a hole ago. How far beyond the soft cap 20 can you go with passive bonuses to these skill, to skill levels? Um, well, you can go as far as you want with plus the skills, but it doesn't increase the synergies. So... 
take for instance um, combat masteries. There's no synergies for combat masteries, um, and um, it doesn't really matter. So you can continually rise, you know, raise the level of these abilities as high as you can get them. Um, but there usually is diminishing returns on the abilities. So uh, to to make a point, natural resistance barbarian. Uh, so I'm going to look up natural resistance. I'm going to pull up the uh, the tree. So at level one, it's 12 percent. At level two, it's 21 percent. Pretty big increase. Um, at level nine, it's 52 percent. But at level 10, it's only 54 percent. So you only go up two percent, right? At level 18, it's 60. 65%, but at level 19, it's only 66%, so you've only gone up 1%. Um, at level 25, it's 68%, so you've only gone up again 1%. Um, the difference between like going up one point when you're already capped on some of these skills is not huge bonuses. And that's why sometimes, um, especially with skills like Natural Resistance, people will find the point at which the diminishing returns becomes severe. And then they will think about how many plus the skills they have, and they'll bring it to that level. So instead of bringing natural resistance just to level 20 and just saying, okay, well, I want to max it, um, people will go, okay, let me look at this chart. And it looks like the diminishing returns really start around level 13. And then they might say, okay, well, I want level 13, but I don't want to put 13 points into it. And so they'll go, okay, well, I know I'm going to have plus five to all skills. And they're going to go, okay, well, then that means I'm going to bring this skill to, you know, level eight, um, which should be, let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, so that would be, that would be the right point to put it at. Some skills, yes, some skills, no. So, so some skills have diminishing returns like this and get to the point where putting points into them is, is kind of worthless. And then other skills, um, you want to get as high as humanly possible no matter what. So, um, for instance, if you were talking about something like Frenzy or uh, Whirlwind, um, or you were talking about your Masteries, um, I mean, you, you're, you're getting a massive amount of damage from these, and, um, and a couple extra points is nice. Um, I think Barbarian tends to be on more on the side of diminishing returns than the other classes. Um, because I'm pretty sure the combat masteries diminish as you get higher level. The natural resistance, the iron skin, they, they all diminish. Um, they eventually get to the point where plus the skills isn't doing a whole lot. Um, but I mean, that's not a bad thing. It means that you can put less points in here. And use your plus the skills to bring you up to the right values. You just kind of have to make sure you have at least one point in those abilities. Um, but what I was saying about the shouts. So you can cast them on other people. And you don't even have to be in the game. So, so you join a game. You cast your shouts. You, you know, you like run out of town and you're like, you're like, hey, come here. Hey, come here. And they're like, what? And then you go like this and you're like, you're like, yeah, rah, rah, yeah, rah, rah. And, then, and then you just leave. And now the person that you've shouted on has your shouts for 455 seconds. Which, uh, if we divide that out, 455 divided by 60 is 7.58 minutes, which is pretty darn nice. So about 7 minutes and like 35 seconds. Uh, seven minutes and thirty-five seconds is a is a lot of time, um, and and you can you can use barbarians like this, like if you wanted to build yourself a barbarian specifically, um, you know for for shouts you could like have like an eight man group and you could just have like a max plus to skill shout barbarian, and like he could be running like level fifty shouts or something like that if you could get it that high. And you would just bring him into the group. He would just do his little shouts in the middle of your little eight man, and uh, and then we leave. And then somebody else could join, and that one person that joins wouldn't have any shouts. But but it, but at least your uh, your your little eight man would have uh, your little set your little seven man would have uh, max shouts. And that's uh, that's an interesting thing that uh, some people do with barbarians. So uh, let's look at some weapons. How about that? So Barbarian is definitely a weapon character. Um, and I think it would be not doing the Barbarian justice if we didn't at least take a look at some weapons. 
So uh, the Barbarian has a lot of specific weapons that are aimed at him. Not necessarily that you're specifically going to use. But there are weapons... Uh, of course, I'm on the wrong character, aren't I? No! Where's Spears 2? Crossbows, bows... I got too many characters on here. Trappy Trap McTrap from the from the day of the assassin. Orby Borby from the day of the uh, barbarian. And look, Day of the Barb from the day of the barbarian that we haven't played yet. He's a surprise. You guys haven't seen him yet. Just pretend pretend you haven't seen him. Even though you just saw him. Just, you didn't you didn't see him. Mm mm. <laughs> Let's take a look at unique axes. I'm pretty sure there's a couple barbarian axes in here. Uh, so we've got that's a druid. I mean, pretty much any of these could be used by a barbarian. It's not like it's not like a barbarian couldn't put on any of these weapons and just have fun murdering things. I mean, that's what barbarians do, after all. They are murderers of things. And there's the Bull Cathos set that only the Barbarian can wear. It's the uh, Bull Cathos Tribal Guardian Mythical Sword and the uh, Bull Cathos Sacred Charge Colossus Blade. Um, he's the only one that can wear it because he's the only one that can put on two swords. How many enchant games do I think we'll find in Diablo 2 Resurrected? Um, I don't think we're going to find any. I have a real, I have a really interesting feeling about Diablo 2 Resurrected that the bots that are advertising their presence are going to be gone first. Um, I don't think we're going to see a lot of bots advertising their presence. It's, uh, and if they and if they do, they're not gonna they're not gonna be around for very long. Um, now, granted, if you have a person who's running a sorceress who's not a bot, they could be doing enchant games. I actually really, 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 really hope that they don't, because I never really liked enchant games. I feel like enchant games are uh, kind of cheating. Like, if you have a sorceress and she's in your group and she throws you enchant, that's one thing. But if you have a bot sitting in town who's enchanting everyone who types in the word enchant, that is a whole other ball of wax. <laughs> a whole other ball of wax. Taking her to Mars, she hasn't put Mars anymore. Okay. Alright, Woogie's going to get her hair done. Dang. I see Grandma Sam, uh, Noir said a game where mid-level, high-level Sork enchants you with level 20 enchant, so you do fire damage on your melee. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the gist of it. The the only thing that he's not telling you though is that the enchant level is so high and so ridiculous that as a low-level character, you literally run around one-shotting everything. You just you just one-shot everything. Like there's nothing that you can't one-shot because you're. Because you're doing so much fire damage and you have so much attack rating from enchant that uh, that is that is way higher level than you. <laughs> Lie that you adore said you better get that hair did. You better get the hair did. I I imagine Lie you adore you were bobbing your head like this when you said it. But get the hair did. Uh, what was I looking for? I was looking for the spears. Where are your spears? Unique two-handed weapons. Oh yeah, a bunch of nice, uh, nice unique two-handed weapons. We got uh, we got soul flays and shadow fangs and black tongue and the patriarch, which is pretty nice. Um, there's actually a sword. Oh yes, I want to show you that sword. So somebody was talking about a barbarian using a shield earlier, and, uh, and I wanted to, to pull up this sword specifically for that person. So there is a sword that is specifically made for barbarians. Um, and the sword is is only usable by barbarians, 
and uh, it's called Sword Guard. Here it is right here. It is a unique executioner sword. And uh, I lie that, <laughs> lie that you adore said, yes, it's a bobbin. What's up, Fort Canius? Welcome back, sir. Uh, so the Sword Guard is an interesting sword because it has increased chance of blocking on it. But it's a two-handed sword. So there is no class in the game that can benefit from the increased chance of blocking except for Barbarian. Barbarian is the only class in the game that can take a Sword Guard Executioner sword and equip it with a shield. So, um, so if somebody was talking about a shield barbarian, um, I believe that even uh, Blizzard North would agree with you that shield barbarians are a thing because they literally made a sword specifically for shield barbarians. Now, I think most barbarians tend to avoid sword slash shield combinations, but um, but the fact that a sword like this even exists at all makes me wonder if um, if there's not like some really epic shield barbarian builds out there that I just. Uh, I just haven't been paying attention to. And it has some really nice effects on it. It's 30% damage taken goes to mana, which would definitely be helpful. Uh, all resistances on it. It's got defense versus missile, defense versus melee, defense based on character level, um, enhanced damage, and then increased chance of blocking and faster hit recovery. So all around just a very defensive sword, like in, in every single way, shape, and form. Um, I would assume that if you actually wanted to use this, though, you'd have to upgrade it to the Hell version, which I believe would be a Colossus Blade? Not 100% sure on that. Um, I mean, yes, that, and that's kind of what I'm getting at, is Shield Barbarians are probably not optimal. But I would imagine that being super duper extra tanky, because if you can if you could make it work, you'd be really tanky. 75% uh, chance to block. Um, Junior said, uh, really nice for a Concentrate Barbarian. That actually does sound like a, a good uh, a good build. Concentrate Barbarian with a nice shield. Yeah, I could see that. So, uh, you know, you have items like this that exist specifically for Barbarians, which I always thought was really cool. And, um, you know, you have other items like this, like Toad's, Toad's Falle Flam, which, uh, which is an interesting weapon because it has level 10 enchant charges on it. So if you want to have an easy way to enchant yourself, we were just talking about enchant games. If you want to have an easy way to enchant yourself, there it is. Um, there are also a lot of other swords in the game. Like there's even a sword that has uh, level 18 Inferno attached to it. Um, you know, we've got the Grandfather Colossus Blade here, which has pretty nice plus to maximum damage. Just, just tons and tons of swords. Uh, the Vile Husk Sword has level 1 Amplify Damage on Striking. Uh, which, as a Barbarian, Amplify Damage is definitely going to be something very nice that you want to get. But as we were talking about earlier, it doesn't work with uh, with Whirlwind. So, um, does a, ver a Berserk affect Dodge slash Block Rate? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, I wouldn't imagine that it would, but let's uh, look it up real quick just to be sure. Uh, Berserk completely converts all physical damage to magic damage, which is pretty sweet. Uh, but it also makes the Barbarian unable to benefit from lifesteal and mana steal, even with life tap. However, this same trait also makes Barbarian immune to attacker takes damage of effects, such as Iron Maiden and Thorns, because these only affect physical damage, reflect physical damage, not magical. For a brief period after the blow, duration decreases with skill, and does not stack, only being renewed on cast. All sources of defense are removed. Even the bonuses coming from Iron Skin and Dexterity uh, resistances are not affected. The user can still block if he wields a shield. In such case, a fast rate of blocking may come in handy. The combination of loss of lifesteal capabilities and defense can make this a very dangerous skill to use. Against physical immune foes, this skill is the best weapon in the Barbarian's arsenal, so in Nightmare and Hell Difficulties Berserk may be the skill of choice against the those particular foes. So uh, you can't even life or mana steal while using Berserk. That's, uh, that's pretty ridiculous. But you can block. <laughs> Yay! Just what I needed tonight, rum and cola and a ginger stream. <laughs> What's up, Onyx? Hello. Welcome to the party.
I, it sounds like something that I'd want to do for fun, B3. It sounds like a challenge, and I've always loved a challenge. Always. It's always been one of those things that I'm like, oh, it's challenging. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Warby Borby. That name's great. That's going to go in the Hall of Fame there. I'm going to name my first sorceress on uh, on Diablo 2 Resurrected Orby Borby. It's going to be her name. I don't care what sorceress she is. Whether she's a fire sorceress, a lightning sorceress, or an ice sorceress. doesn't matter. Her name is going to be Orby Borby. Orby Borby. And if I don't name her Orby Borby, somebody remind me to name her Orby Borby. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Ah, there we go. Unique Axis 2. That's what I was looking for. Ah, uh, so we got Warlord's Trust, we got Spell Steel, Storm Rider Tabar, we got this big giant Bone Slayer Blade. I mean, barbarians get all the fun weapons. They got all these, these great like look at this Minotaur axe with the with the thirty percent crushing blow to freeze's target, uh, to hit blinds target. That's uh, not freeze's target. Half uh, slows target by fifty percent. Uh, that would be a nice whirlwind weapon. I bet that'd be a really nice whirlwind weapon. Uh, we got Rune Master Axe. Uh, what else we got up here? Hell Slayer Decapitator Axe, which is pretty sweet. Lots of based on character level effects, so very, very good if you're like a higher level character. Uh, Executioner's Justice. Freaking beastie weapon there. Level 6 Decrepify when you kill an enemy. Mm. Measure Smith's Reaver Champion Axe. Oh yeah, the GGM clan. So uh, we're I'm still working on it. I'm still 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 putting it together. But yeah, we're definitely gonna do a um, a clan for Diablo 2 Resurrected. So if you guys and gals are interested in joining a clan for Diablo 2 Resurrected, um, I will be forming one. We have a uh, kind of like a, we're we're in the in the development stages. You know, we still got quite a ways away until uh, September 23rd. So we still got like 21 days, plenty of time to uh, to form the clan. Um, but basically, the goal of the clan is going to be, you know, to help each other out, to level up together sometimes, uh, to get rushes from each other. Um, you know, they f may form little groups, leveling groups, things like that. Uh, we'll also have magic find days where we run around magic finding equipment for everybody. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll have some fun with it. Uh, we'll have some, like, low-level sets for, uh, for low-level characters and... Um, you know, just just in general, we'll try and keep on hand, like maybe some Saigon sets and some Irathas and uh, maybe some Death sets and things like that, which will definitely come in handy for uh, for low level characters. And um, I mean, I have no no since we have cross progression, there's definitely no reason why it couldn't you know cross over to consoles. Um, there will probably be some characters, people, you know, people who have both console and PC. Like, I plan to have um, the PC version and the Nintendo Switch version. So, uh, we should be able to swap items that way if we, uh, if we need to trade gear. And, um, I mean, the goal of it is, uh, is to be, you know, a, a, a group, a clan to, uh, to uh, help each other out and have fun. And uh, that way we have some people to play with, which we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, like uh, like snatching up all the equipment and, and we never get any uh, out, out of it. Or, you know, so when we kill Bale and Bale drops like six items, the six items actually go to the characters who need them as opposed to, you know, like like the, the best barbarian item in the world drops and the sorceress gets it and then the sorceress takes it into a trade game. You know, that's the kind of stuff that always makes you angry in Diablo 2. And, um, you know, if you're playing with friends, you don't really have to worry about that because if an item drops that you don't need, more often than not, when you're playing with friends, they go, hey, hey, you want this uh, Shaco that just dropped on the ground? I don't really need it. Um, I'm going to be the Minister of Propaganda. Yeah, we're going to need some lieutenants and stuff, some people to help out, to uh, coordinate things. So, uh, you know, Greetings. just hop into the Discord. We'll, we'll, we're going to discuss it. I've got a whole little channel down there uh, for discussion purposes if you guys have any any ideas. Um, Militant said he's going to be on console and PC, so there's one right there. 
By the way, um, the Shaco looks even uglier now than it did before, so I hope you guys are all excited to put that ugly green poop schmear on your head because uh, because it is a terrible looking hat. Just just doo doo, green green doo doo at that. It's it literally looks like green doo doo smeared on your head, and I hope you're happy for that. Green doo doo. Where's my unique spears too? Unique Spurs 2, where are you? Green words low, Hawanins, Millabregas, Cathins, Death. We got so many different sets here. Unique Scepters, Unique Daggers. Oh yeah, let's look at Daggers real quick. So there is a dagger specifically for barbarians. You guys are going to laugh at this dagger. So remember earlier in the video when I went over item find and find potion and uh, grimoire? Well, there actually is a dagger in the game. It's called the Heart Carver Rondell. And the Heart Carver Rondell is made specifically for barbarians. It has plus four grimoire, plus four find item, and plus, plus four find potion. So even if you don't put points into... Uh, into find item, find potion, or grim ward. Um, I think it's actually kind of funny to have these kind of like on swap, and and then have like find item and find potion on your other hands, and then you run around and grunt at corpses for some free potions. I actually did this on um, one of my Battle.net characters. So I have a uh, a throwing barbarian. And his name is Champion GGM. And uh, he's not fully geared up yet, but uh, but he does have two hard carver rondels on his swap, specifically so I can run around and find potions. I got tired of running to town for potions, and I was like, I'm a barbarian. Why do I need to run to town for potions? I don't need to run to town for potions. I don't need to run to town for potions at all. Yes, if you were going to do a full item find barbarian and actually put points into the skills onyx, then yes, skull dagger would be better. Um, in fact, there are much better, much better items than uh, than Heart Carver Rondells. But you don't have to put any points into the skill if you've got two Heart Carver Rondells. Because you can just grunt at corpses and get your little full juvies and your little potions. <laughs> and I know, I'm dumb, I'm dumb. But I thought it was funny. Look here, sirs, ain't got time for this. Like a machine gun, sucker! Why are you out of range? Don't be out of range. Come here, rock a pichu. No! Freaking Frenzy, you're so fast with Frenzy, half the time you click on stuff, you don't even mean to. A whole Eisenhart's drop. Would a gold finding Travincial Runner be as viable as a first char in Diablo 2 Resurrected? Or would MF be preferable? Um little confused on your statement, Torsten. Are you you're talking about clicking on um clicking on chests for runes? Is that what you're talking about? Clicking on chests for runes? I mean that's a common place people go to to uh, to find runes is is like Travancol, Karas Bazaar, um, etc. I mean, generally you kind of work the entire zone from like Karas up to Travancol, and usually you kill Travancol. Usually you kill the Travancol uh, guard as well. Like you don't. It's lots of gold to gamble. I mean, usually you can get lots of gold with a gold find barbarian. I, I see what you're talking about. Gold finding barbarian. Um. Gambling is interesting, but I don't think it's as effective as magic finding. It's a little more targeted. So um, it's definitely an interesting from from the standpoint of your targeting specific items. Um, but gambling is also based on the level of your character. So when you say, uh, would a gold finding barbarian be a viable first character? Um, that makes me think immediately no. 
And the reason why I think immediately no is because if it's your first character, that means it's your lowest level character. And, uh, and your lowest level character is not going to have the best gambles. Because um, generally your, your gambling is based exactly on what level your character is. So the higher level your character, the better your, better your gambling becomes. So if you had like a level 92, or I think it's like 94 is like the best gamble level. If you had like a level 94 character at that point, you could be doing some really nice gambles. But um, I don't know. It, it depends on how quickly you level up. Um, and as your first character, your first character is probably not going to level up very fast. Yes, Death Guard Sash is a very nice sash. Very nice. It's a very nice sash. Speaking of Death Guard, I actually have that on my uh, on my little Day of the Barbarian character. Um, who else do I have on here to show? I don't think I have any more barbarians, do I? No, that's my only barbarian that I have right now. My only barbarian. Flips a desk at time, not passing fast enough <laughs> to DTR release. Uh, Noir said, MF is greater than gambling. The thing about gamble is MF has no effect on gamble, and getting good items rare or unique, you have a better chance on a drop versus a gamble. I mean, it's it's kind of debatable, Noir, because you're... So with, with Magic Find, it's not targeted. So you kill a monster, the monster drops some items, and the items are random. So you have absolutely no control over what is dropping. Magic Find only gives you control over what the quality of the items are. So the monster can drop absolute garbage, and the garbage could roll unique garbage, and it's still unique garbage. Like, it's still not going to be good, even though it's a unique item. Whereas gambling, at least you're gambling for the item that you want, specifically. So instead of relying on this pure random chance that the item that you want could possibly drop, you are targeting the item that you actually want. And so in a way, you're increasing your chances pretty, pretty high, just simply because you're targeting this, the precise item that you want to get. So, for instance, if you want a really nice amulet, you gamble for amulets. And, you know, there's a good chance you're going to get a good amulet because you're only gambling amulets. Whereas if you have really high magic find and you run out and you kill a monster and you want an amulet, there's no guarantee that that amulet is ever going to drop. All right, so... We've covered the skills. We've talked about the the barbarian. There there is no max magic find uh, head Ronat, but it does have uh, extreme diminishing returns. Um, let me see if I can link that in chat real quick for you. Hold on. Magic. Magic. Moments. There you go. This is my uh, magic find video. If you guys are interested, it's about an hour and a half long. It's uh, and there, and there, there's a lot to go over. So um, I, I'd rather not, you know, go over that right now because I'm talking about barbarian. But if you want to learn about magic find, I have it all there, including the chart which shows the diminishing returns on magic find, and. Um, you know, really kind of explains how to to target specific items, um, which will help you out a ton. All right, so we are going to play our Day of the Barbarian Barb. So uh, I didn't want to bore you guys leveling up from 1 to 19. And uh, and since we played, a lot of us have probably played Diablo 2 Resurrected. So I really didn't want to, you know, bore you with Act 1 through 2. So I've skipped ahead to Act 3, and we're going to play around in Act 3. I've also given myself uh, level 19 and uh, and some equipment. So I've given myself a Berserker's Helmet. Um, I've given myself a Death's Hand Gloves, which if you look at Death's Hand Gloves, they're pretty crappy. 50% poison resist and 75% poison length reduction. Not the greatest gloves in the world. And the belt has 20 defense and cannot be frozen. Cannot be frozen is nice, but it also gives me really poor potion slots, which just boo boo small potion slots but put on the pieces together and you get 30 percent increased attack speed eight percent lifesteal and 15 to all resistances which is pretty darn sweet 
And then, of course, you also have the swords. Um, I've also given myself angelic because uh, angelic is very easy to come by. And I generally do not build a barbarian unless I am... I've got some gear laying around. They're usually not my first characters because barbarians tend to be very gear dependent. And because of that, I have decided that uh, putting this character into the wild naked, just, just a raw naked barbarian was probably not the brightest idea in the world. And so I actually gave him some equipment because I figured, you know, hey, let's, uh, let's actually give the barbarian some gear. And um, so first thing we've got to do is we've got to put our points in so we can actually use some stuff. And uh, and we've got seventy one strength, so we need uh, we need quite a few points in strength here. Hold on. Boop 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 boop. Oh yeah, I love twinking my barbs. Eighth right, you know it. Don't don't tell me nothing. I'll twink every single barb in existence. My my barbarians rarely ever go into combat without like massive amounts of equipment. And, uh, and so when you complete the full set of Death's Touch, you get uh, another 4% lifesteal from the sword. So you get 8 from the set and 4 from the sword. So you're rocking a nice, uh, was that 12%? Uh, and then you also get 10 to minimum damage. You get 25 to 75 cold damage, 40% bonus to attack rating. And then another all resistance is 25 on top of the all resistances, uh, 15 that you get from the belt. So really nice set. That's why I'm rocking two of them. I didn't get myself boots, though. That would have been nice. Boots. So uh, yesterday we voted on what kind of character I would build, and the vote was Whirlwind Barbarian. So that's what we're going to uh, that's what we're going to play today. <sighs> so thirsty. Spend them chinchilla tour turds lie that you adore. Spend them turds. <laughs> That's right, yes. Excellent. Alright, so we've got to build our skills. So uh, we've already put our, our strength and our dex in so we can actually equip our equipment. And let's go ahead and throw the rest into vitality because we definitely need some health. And, um, and we're going to be a whirlwind barbarian. And whirlwind barbarians have no synergies. Not a single synergy out there. And uh, Lie at Your Door is trying to drown me. Spending them points. Why don't you spend them on some sounds? I got lots of sounds. <laughs> so uh, to get to Whirlwind, we got a lot of points to spend. Uh, we've got to spend one in Bash. We've got to spend one in Stun. We've got to spend one in Concentrate. One in Leap. One in Leap Attack. And uh, Whirlwind is a level 30 skill. So we're not getting there anytime soon. Now, what I'm probably going to do is uh, put the rest of my points into the Sword Mastery. Um... So let's get one in increased stamina, one in iron skin, and then everything else is going to get dumped into sword mastery probably. Uh, let me just take a look at the war cries real quick just to make sure. Uh, battle orders is 24. I mean, we could throw one point into shout for right now just so we have some extra defense, but 20 seconds is such a very tiny duration. Oh, I'm on uh, I'm on single player Onyx. Um, I I didn't want to bore everyone by leveling up the character from scratch, so I, I went on single player and hacked him in basically. <laughs> you can out level the stuff you're howling. Hot spurs. Well, I'm definitely gonna throw one point into howl, and uh, let's grab one point into shout. And do 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 do. I think that's it. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right. So let's throw all the rest of the points into sword mastery until that's uh, pretty much capped out. So we've got a nice twenty six percent critical chance, damage eighty eight percent, and one hundred twenty four percent attack rating. Um, and then we got to figure out what skills we're going to use because you know we we kind of screwed everything up. So we've got. We've got our shout. Let's go ahead and keep that on our right click since it only lasts for 30 seconds. That way we can use it every now and then. And we've got our choice between bash, stun, and concentrate. I think concentrate would probably be a good one. Um, let's go ahead and throw shout F1 and then let's put leap on F2. 
Nice little combo there. A little c -c -c combo breaker. All right, let's go to Loot Go Lane, and hopefully we should be able to talk to uh, Mashif and travel to Act 3. Can a shouting bar be viable, the one that does damage when doing battle orders? You're talking about um, the one that does damage? You're talking about Warcry? Um, Warcry, I think at max, like when it's really, really beefed up, does about a thousand damage. It's an a thousand damage AOE attack. It's very similar to like a Nova. So, um, if you, if you've used Nova before on like a Sorceress, um, you'll know that Nova's damage isn't the greatest, but it does have a nice AOE effect. So it hits lots of targets and, uh, doesn't really make it the best in the world. I, I cheated myself the waypoints too. I'm going skipping right over the jungle. I'm skipping right over to the jungle. What's the NR1 worst Baba skill in the game? <laughs> worst Baba skill? I think if uh, if you had to go by people's opinion, um, I would definitely say Grim Ward is probably the uh, the worst. But as we talked about earlier, Grim Totem does have its uses. Um, it's not useless, it's just mostly useless, which, which I guess is a thing. Mostly, it's just mostly useless. Which, uh, as we discussed earlier, the main two uses of that skill are, number one, giving your allies a safe place to stand, and number two, um, forcing the minions away from a boss. Um, which I think really only comes in handy in, the, in Uber Tristram. Um, so if you're in Uber Tristram, you kill a monster, throw your Grimoire up, and then you can fight Bale or Mephisto or whoever uh, without having to worry about the minions beating the ever-loving crap out of you. It is useful for that purpose. That's, uh, that's about it. It's a war scepter. I should have bought some potions when I was in town, but I got no money and only got a frown. I'm moving all around with my barbarian, and I don't have whirlwind, and it sucks. Oh yeah, I always hated leapers. Oh man, I hated leapers. I I remember even back when I was a kid, I used to run around and I used to like just just rage. Just rage at the barbarian. Freaking. These are so much easier to fight when you're on a, uh, like a, a freezing arrow Amazon. She just freezes them in place and you just kill them. <laughs> Carbon animations is pretty funny. I like his. Uh, I like his ability. Uh, I really like his uh, his comics. I guess that's what they would be called as comics. I mean, he really captures the uh, things that we all went through. I think. I think it's more so his videos are funny because he actually played the game. It's obvious by the way that he creates his comics that he's actually played Diablo 2. Either that or he's really good at research. <laughs> he might be really good at research. The nicknames of the Barbarian. I call the Barbarian the Burbertadin. That's my favorite. The Burbertadin. The Burbertadin. I believe some people call him the Barb. He's the Barb. B-A-R-B. So boring though. Berbertadin is so much better. Who doesn't like Berbertadin? Selling all my potions. Because these are real crappy and they're not worth a lot of money because they're poopy potions. Poopy potions. Babu. <laughs> Babu. Baba. Bobando. 
I need my faster run walk. So here's level one leap, 7.3 yards. That's 7.3 yards. Can't even jump over this thing. It's impossible. <coughs> People in D2 like like the U. Sosu, Dudu, Babu, also Gozu. What's up, Tigerishly? How goes it, sir? Double swing would be so much nicer. But I don't have a double swing. Double swing would be so much nicer. I'm okay. I'm about to drink some liquid because someone, someone who shall be unnamed, may have redeemed the hydrate command. Possibly. Oh yeah, I need a barb hat with plus double swing. Perf that would be perfect, actually. Eh, eh, eh. No, come back here and don't be rude. I do 159 damage. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. I'm doing all right. Ask Kane about the Jade figure. I want to show you guys this because Kane is a butthole. All right, Kane's a butthole. You spend your entire life, okay, rescuing the world from Diablo, Mephisto, Bale, all of the above, right? You spend your whole time rescuing the world, essentially, right? And uh, and this is what Kane gives you in return. I want I want you guys to hear this super super loud. It's one of the reasons why I don't like Kane. I think Kane's a douche. I mean, Kane's a good guy. Don't get me wrong, but he's kind of a douche. Damn it. Ah, the golden bird of Quile. Thank you, my friend. Busy yourself while I experiment with the ashes within it. Then return and see what I've made for you. It pains me to waste time with you, so I'll get right to the point. There is a very special book from the ashes of Quile. All right, so you get your potion. You drink your potion, right? All right. Get your 20 to life, and you go down here to Kane. To Kane. All right. And this is what Kane tells you after you finish this quest. Never forget that your ultimate purpose here in Kurast is to destroy Mephisto. The ancient Horodrim imprisoned the Lord of Hatred inside the Guardian Tower that is located within the temple city of Travancore. Know this, friend. The only way to gain entry to Mephisto's prison is to destroy the artifact known as the Compelling Orb. Mephisto used this device to control the Zakarum priests and their followers. <laughs> the orb can only be destroyed with an ancient flail imbued with the spirit of the one incorruptible priest. Soon after his imprisonment, Mephisto worked his evil corruption on the Zakarum priesthood. All were turned to his dark ways, save one, Kalim, the K. Hagen of the High Council. Mephisto directed the other council priests to slay and dismember Kalim, and then scatter his remains across the kingdom. The priest Sankakur succeeded Kalim as K. Hagen, eventually becoming the embodiment of Mephisto here on the mortal plane. The corrupted High Council fashioned an orb to control the rest of the Zakarum faithful and used their powers to hide the lair of their master from mortals. Your task is to collect the scattered relics of Kalim, his heart, his brain, and his eye. Then, using the Horodric Cube, transmute Kalim's flail with his relics. Once this is accomplished, you it's must so destroy long. the compelling orb it with is so long. will to open the way into the corrupt sanctum of Mephisto. So, so I wanted to show you guys this, okay? Because you do the simplest quest in the game, okay? You take, you find a bird from the first monster you kill, 
right? You take this bird, you trade it for a, I mean, a, 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 a jade figurine. Take this jade figurine, trade it for the golden bird. You complete this quest in like a matter of seconds, like the first time you come in here. And the first thing Kane comes out of Kane's mouth, and he's like, Never forget that your ultimate purpose here is to not serve yourself, but instead do what I ask. And then proceeds to give you like a 10 minute speech about what you're actually supposed to be doing. Like imagine if you were like a kid and you like you like came in the house and you're super excited and you're like you're like dad I caught a squirrel look he's really cute and you like show him to your dad and you're like yes he is really cute cute but never forget that your ultimate purpose here is to take that trash bag and put it into the trash can so that the trash can make its way to the landfill and so that the trash can decompose and then eventually turn into a tree which will then grow forward and then that squirrel can then live in said tree and you're like dad i was trying to show you a squirrel and he's like but never forget and you're just like i can't show you anything Can't show you anything. Well, the thing that really gets me is that is that Kane is a glorified bookworm. He doesn't actually know any of this stuff he's teaching you. He doesn't he doesn't he hasn't done any of it. He hasn't met any of their Rodrum, as far as I can tell. Like, as far as I can tell, Kane is literally just, he's just, he's just, like, a nerd. He's like a nerd who found a library, and in the library was a bunch of books. And the books, you know, they they just, they told him everything he needed to know, but he, didn't, he hasn't actually met any of those people. If you, if you play Diablo 1... And I do have a Diablo 1 uh, playthrough if you guys are interested. I know some of you have probably seen me link this like a thousand times. But I don't care. Um, that's my Diablo 1 playthrough. In the Diablo 1 playthrough, D Kane literally says that he was in a library. And he read all this in the books. And he didn't believe any of it. Like, he literally did not believe a word of any of the stuff that he read in the library. And, uh, and then when Diablo came to... To Tristram, and uh, and started murdering everybody, um, and then he still didn't believe apparently, and then finally, um, but what did he say? He said, and when Lazarus was his, was his name Lazarus? I can't remember the 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 evil mage that stole the little boy, uh, stole the skeleton king's kid. Um, when he when he finally when he stole the kid, I think that's when Cain finally started to realize that maybe the books had some truth to them and uh and i'm like diablo showing up wasn't enough you didn't that wasn't a good sign maybe i don't i don't know <laughs> i guess you become a, a herodric uh scholar just by simply reading the books you don't actually have to fight demons or anything I'm doing pretty good with my concentrate. I guess the concentration. My concentrate. I do not believe. I do not believe. You cannot make me. I do not believe. Oh, he believes now, though. He went from... He went from, oh, those are just stories about angels and demons. He goes, those aren't real. And then, and then all of a sudden, then he's like, <laughs> then he's like, an archangel Tyrael himself told me. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought you didn't even believe in any of that like five minutes ago. He's got like big, big, huge pupils. And he's like, demons. Didn't you see the demons in the kitchen? Demons. A fine potion helmet. Here, sir. <laughs> I'm just grunting at everybody. I thought I was going to get away from the grunting, but no. I'm grunting people. I'm grunting at people again. 
There's so much grunting going on. Bale is the strongest because he is the eldest of the primes. IRRC. Diablo's Soulstone. Diablo Soulstone got ruined. According to the story, Diablo Soulstone was like smashed beyond reckoning. If I remember correctly. Wasn't by the time Diablo or uh, the the Wanderer actually turned into Diablo, wasn't the Soulstone like ruined? Lord Topaz. What? So, I don't know if I just forgot or if I never actually learned this. But at the end of Diablo 2, at the end of the expansion, when you finally beat the game, a big spoiler, by the way, I'm sure you guys have never heard this before in your life. Um, Tyrael says that destroying the world stone will have unforeseen consequences on the world. Um, what exactly did he mean by that? Like, I, I guess I might have known at some point, and I guess maybe I forgot. Um, like, what did he mean by the unknown consequences? Did anybody ever find out what those unknown consequences were? What did destroying the world stone actually do, I guess? Oh, so it brought the Nephilim back. Gotcha. Made everybody stronger. girlfriend cracks me up sometimes I'm not gonna say what she told me on camera cuz cuz she probably get mad at me but she's funny she's funny as all get out I swear mm, why did we never break Diablo's soul stone in d2 I think it caused yep d3 was about to say didn't they I thought they did not only the Neph, but the demons too since the world stone was brought over from another universe by Lilith and her lover and they created sanctuary the angels and demons were fighting for it Inarius I have no clue what's going on hey hey sir sir stop that sir that's right stop it stop it all right, we're gonna put some more points into um, sword mastery. I want all the sword mastery I can get. If we're gonna be a whirlwind barb, I need lots of sword mastery. Not sword mastery, sword. I need some more vitalitas too. Vitalitas need all the vi. Hey, sir, sir, don't run from me. Angels and the demons. In the black soul stone. Yeah, I could have sworn Diablo soul stone got uh, kind of cracked or something. Like it wasn't destroyed, it was cracked, and then, and then yeah, and then I remember the black soul stone thing. The soul stone of the blackness, the blackest soul stone. It is so crazy, it wanted to go home. That's it, that's the whole song. 
I swear I could sing songs to the barbarian's swings. He's got a nice, like, metronome-esque grunting. Got that metronome-esque... Ooh, Greaves. I need boots. Yay! Boots. For, ooh, 11% magic fine boots. Exactly what I always wanted. I need some more monsters to beat. So I can get back to grunting. Grunting, grunting, grunting. It's what we do all day. Grunting, grunting, grunting. It's better than punting. I think Bale's strength was in his massive army more than his own power. Saying he is not strong, they all know dark magic, but I think Diablo was technically the strongest out of all of them. Um, it's kind of hard to say. Like physically, I think maybe Diablo was the strongest, like like in single one-on-one -on -one mono e mono combat. But Bale definitely knew some very interesting abilities. I mean, he was casting spells on people from like miles away is what it felt like. You know how like if you if you stay still too long in um in Worldstone Keep, he literally kills you. Like he just starts casting like lightning and stuff on you from really far away. You know, as a hero, he can he can use like a, quite a few spells actually. But um but as a hero, you know, you can withstand that. But could you imagine like Bale just being able to cast spells on you from like 18 miles away? He would murder most regular people with that. Just rain spell. It's probably what he was doing to Haragoth. He was probably just casting spells inside of town. That poor barbarian. He got exploded. He got exploded. He got exploded. He got exploded. He blew up. Look here, Night Lord. I want you to die. Mm -hmm. I always hated fighting Night Lords. Especially if you didn't do like a massive amount of damage. Because every time they hit you, they steal back most of their health that you just did damage. And like, basically with Night Lords, there's only one way to kill them. And it's do more damage than they're stealing your life of. And if you can't if you can't overcome their lifesteal, they're so annoying to fight. You gonna play some Stardew Valley, babe? My girlfriend loves Stardew Valley. She plays it like all the time. How many times have you remade your farm? It's the fifth time she's remade her farm. And every single And every single time she remakes her farm, she gets all the way to the end. Like every single time. Yeah, I always remember he blows up the barbarian. That's why that was what I remember. I was like, "Hello, barbarian," and he's just like, Poof. "Goodbye, barbarian." It's like Animal Crossing. <laughs> what is it? No, Stardew Valley is way better than Animal Crossing. I feel like uh, I feel like Animal Crossing is very simple, and Stardew Valley is much much more complex. If you were to compare the two, um, Harvest Moon, it is more similar to Harvest Moon, but I feel like Stardew Valley goes so much more beyond what Harvest Moon did. Harvest Moon was uh, was really interesting because I did used to play that back in the day, but um, Stardew Valley goes leagues beyond beyond uh, Harvest Moon. All these fingers over here. Gelib Flame Finger. Mouth Dragon Hand. Where you at, Ice Fist? I know it. I knew it. 
cold fingers, hot fingers, and 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 uh, and nasty fingers. Honestly, as much as I loved uh, Harvest Moon back in the day, and uh, as much as I really like old older school kind of games, um, I really actually prefer Stardew Valley over Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon is um, is an amazing game, but Stardew Valley is so much more of an amazing game. I am amp damaged and it really hurts. Please leave me alone before I fart. Do 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 do. I'm gonna poot poot. Please stop being rude to me. I didn't know that he could drop the Haradra cube. I guess I've never actually made it to him before with the the Haradra cube or without the Haradra cube. So I guess I never really uh. I never really knew that. I guess you do actually need the Haradric Cube to be able to complete the quest. So, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I always would have figured they would have just sent you back and be like, uh, dude, you need the Haradric Cube. Uh, what are you doing? Go back to Act 2. You're an idiot. No, well, I guess they're they're a little nicer than that. I, don't, I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought they were just, I thought Diablo uh, creators were just rude. Not in town. They be like, oh yeah, yeah, you forgot that. You're gonna have to go all the way back through the deserts, through the halls of the dead. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a long, that's a long journey, man. You really should have got that when you were in Act Two. <laughs> you can't beat Act Two without the cube either. I mean, technically you can if you're with somebody else. Single player, no. But yeah, you can uh, you can toss it too. Like I, I feel like I need to talk a minute about Stardew Valley. I know this is Day of the Barbarian, but uh, but hear me out. Stardew Valley is made by one guy, and uh, he's been working on the game ever since it created uh, a long time ago. And he's never stopped putting out content updates. Like, never stopped. Like, he literally, to this day, is still putting out content updates. And uh, and the game has expanded so much beyond what it was when it first started. And, uh, and Harvest Moon is a small little game compared to Stardew Valley. Like, when Stardew Valley first started, you could probably say that Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon were about, about equivalent. But, like... After all these years, Stardew Valley has reached the point where it's there have been so many content updates and so many little additions and so many little secrets and so many new areas and so many new quests and new items and things that you can do in Stardew Valley. It like completely dwarfs Harvest Moon in, by, in like every respect. And uh, and if you've never if you haven't played Stardew Valley in a long time, I'd recommend going back to it just for a little while. Download the updates and see what new stuff they've added because it's it's pretty extensive. They literally added like a whole tropical island with a volcano and all sorts of cool stuff and like and like these parrots and uh, and and I, I I literally can't even tell you all the stuff they've added like in just a short period of time. It would probably take me like thirty minutes. Ishmael vile hand. See, I told you one of them. One of them has a cold hand. One of them has a hot hand. One of them has a lightning hand, and the other one has a poop hand. Like his hand is just covered in doo doo. It's like green, green poop. I was talking about the uh, monsters, babe. Well, I wasn't talking about you. I didn't say nothing about you. <laughs> All right. So I cheated, uh, but you know, in if you were in a regular game, we've done this like three times, by the way. Ask her to check in the VOD. What's VOD? Video on demand. What are you talking about, Aetherite? 
I need me to drink that. So in, in other games, basically what you do is you get you kill Traven Call and then you get somebody to give you the waypoint, which I already did. So if you're not in single player, if you're in multiplayer, you can you can beg for the waypoint from somebody, and uh, as long as you've killed Traven Call, you can make your way through here. Look here, Stiggy and Dolls, you guys are rude. <laughs> no, I don't want my girlfriend to check the, the VODs after I finish streaming. I got a towel rune. Shove a towel rune in one of these, have some poison damage. Yes, Noir, they are they are deadly. Since I am uh, so I, I've talked about these guys many, many times before. So let, let your eyes glaze over if, if you've heard this before. But for those of you who might be new, the reason why those monsters have such random death spasms um, is because they actually have the ability to proc um, critical strike or deadly deadly strike, which is double damage. So they dish out ten percent of their HP in damage to all targets nearby in physical damage, mind you, um, as an explosion, and they can also proc Deadly Strike, which doubles the 10% to 20% of their HP in damage. And uh, it's yeah, it's kind of like Fire Enchanted, but Fire Enchanted is 50% fire, 50% physical, uh, whereas their explosion is 100% physical damage. And which means that it's pretty much not resistible unless you've got damage reduced by gear. Um, and then on top of that, because it's 100% physical, it also gets amplified by amplified damage. And amplified damage is 100% as well. So you can literally get quad damage from the little, little pig meat skeleton doll monster things. And, uh, and it's very, very nasty. Like, extremely nasty. Um, but the thing is, is that because they have such a wide range of damage between 10% of their health, 20% of their health, 30% of their health, and 40% of their health, depending, of course, whether you are amplified damage, whether they deadly strike or not, um, etc., etc., um, not the best to, to gauge. So, you know, like if you walk up to a monster and a monster hits you in the face and he does 100 damage and then the monster hits you again in the face and he does like 105 and the monster hits you in the face and he does like 96 and he hits you in the face again and he does like 98. You've got a general idea of what his range is. So he does between like 90 to 120, right? So you've got an idea of how much damage he does. But with the with the stupid little 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 Stygian dolls, because they have such a wide range of damage, you can't really gauge what kind of damage they do, and uh, and they can actually do so much damage that they can kill you in one shot. They often run in packs, which makes things worse. And then all of them can proc deadly strike and have amplified damage, and you could you can literally get one shot by a pack of them. I've I've seen it happen before, where like you shoot off one frozen orb. Or you hit like one zeal and everything pops in like literally like a half a second and you just instant die. My girlfriend's really crazy about naming her characters too. So in Stardew Valley, you can name your farm, you can name your character, and you can name your 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 pet. Right? So you can choose a dog or a cat. <laughs> and you can name your farm animals too. Um, so she named her farm Anal Slice. She's over there giggling too. She's just giggling her little head off. She named her character Buttus. Buttus. And she named her cat Shit. And she named her goat Yo Mama. You should hear the names of the cats in our house. It's not much better. <laughs> Greetings. 
<laughs> What's up, Sniggle Fritz? Are you kidding me? I love it. Wouldn't have it any other way. You should hear the journey of the name of one of our cats. So if, so if any of you guys are new, you've probably never heard this story. I've told it a couple times, but like not recently. So we had this cat. Um, he just kind of wandered in. Like, just not, it, it's, that's literally it. Just wandered in. He's like, oh yeah, I want to live here now. And, uh, and so his name... What was his original name? I can't even remember anymore. What name did you give him originally? Anyway, she eventually gave him the name Marky. Um, she named him after Markiplier. You guys ever seen Markiplier on YouTube? And uh, <laughs> so Marky, Mark turned into Marky, and Marky turned into Marky Poo. And Marky Poo turned into Marky Shits, and Marky Shits turned into turned into Marky Squirts. Um. So if that's not bad enough, okay. So then he had children with with one of the female cats here, which which was not planned and, and very much not welcome. Um. <laughs> there's so many cats. Um. So anyway, one of the cats that came out, one of the kittens, literally acted and looked exactly like him. Like, literally, like, verbatim, like his son, in every single way, shape, and form. And so, we, like, we had absolutely no doubt that it was him that uh, that made these children. And so he ended up being called Marky, Marky Shits as well. So we called him, J we called him Marky Shits Jr. And, um, and Jr., <laughs> J Junior uh, basically obtained the name, and uh, and Marky Shits Senior lost the name, and he went to OG. So now we just call now we just call him OG, and then OG turned into OG Shits, and so <laughs> so now he's the OG Shits, and uh, and Jr. is is a, is a he's a he's a terrible little cat. He's awful, and. Um, and so he started getting nicknames too. We started calling him just Jr. Like he doesn't go by Marky anymore. We just call him Jr. Like Jr. Shits. Um, and then, and now, now his name is literally Jr. Butt Stinks Boy. That's that's literally his name at this point. Jr. Butt Stinks Boy. <laughs> that's terrible. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's terrible. Uh, I mean, we get it under control. I got like lots of air filters to keep things under control. Uh, it gets keeps the smell down. The carbon filters, all sorts of stuff. It usually it's it's uh, it's actually pretty nice. I mean, we got. I mean, we got a lot. We got a lot of uh, air filters. Oh yeah, and uh, and and Jr. Uh, Butt stinks boy is on is on the shirt. He's on the evil cat shirt, by the way. Um, I figure if he hates my guts, I might as well get some money out of him. Uh, so if you guys want a, a JR Butt Stinks Butt Stinks Boy shirt, please uh, please go to ggmentor.com and get yourself an evil cat shirt. He uh, he will stare into your soul the same way he stares into my soul. Oh um, yes, vampires always have a lot of spells. They they always have fireball, firewall, and meteor. And they steal life when they use the abilities too, which which is a pain in the butt. My brothers, My brothers have escaped you, and I can't hit you because I'm not close enough. Stop being rude to me. I'm a barbarian. I'll beat you with my sword. I don't really care. I don't sing songs a lot, so it probably doesn't rhyme, but that's okay because I will beat you with my sword. Grunt, grunt, grunt. This is very hard. Blood everywhere. Oh my god, I got a fart. They got cold touch too. <laughs> Freaking Mephisto has cold touch. Diablo has cold touch. Why want that little cold touch? Stop cold touching me.
I think I might be better off not using Berserk. I think Berserk is actually slowing me down. Oh lord, there's one of them left. Let's try... Uh, let's try Bash. Bash might work better. I meant concentrate. I did. I can't hit him with with bash. Oh, there we go. Come closer. Actually, I think I'm better off just using my double attack. It seems to work better than any of the single target hits because I got two swords. Might as well just 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 wing it. Swing, 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 swing. Your poison is rude. Work on your left arm too. Yeah, I gotta I gotta beef up my left arm. I can't just have one arm bigger than the other. Not like the movie Idiocracy, after all. You guys seen you guys seen Idiocracy, where the where the guy's standing up on the billboard and he's flexing his muscles, and one arm is like ginormous, and the other arm looks like a little little like teenage boys with the Gatorade and crops. It's called Brondo. Thank you very much. Brondo. Okay, in Idiocracy, they called it Brondo. And they watered the crops with Brondo. The guy's like, I'm no genius, but do you guys... Should you, should you be watering crops with Brondo? I think maybe if you water the crops with water, it might actually work. And they're like, you mean from the toilet? <laughs> In Idiocracy, they didn't drink water anymore. Literally, Gatorade came right out of the tap. Just pure Gatorade right out of the tap. Who needs who needs anything other than Gatorade? What's up, Warpig Mahalo? We are training for Diablo 2 Resurrected. This is this is Diablo 2 Resurrected training. You've made it to the correct place. Eisenhart's case. Absolutely god awful. I probably should get myself a mercenary though. It might be good to give him that for uh, for some cheap armor. Plus three to spear mastery. Exactly what I did not need. What do you need? What's up, MW Warcraft337? If you're trying to post links, you, you can't post links. It's it's uh, Nightbot is very rude about that. He does not like it when you post links. I uh, know, Spear with Whirlwind is pretty good with the extra reach. I was going with Swords just because I had a set, but uh, what link do you want to post, Warpig? Maybe I'll give you uh, I'll give you permission. How about that? Explain it to me and maybe I shall allow it. Oh, oh Warcraft. War, Warpig, Warcraft... You wars are all the same, always after war. If it's not Warcraft, it's war pigs. War. War never changes. I bet you wonder how come back this way, have you? What, didn't you see enough action here the first time? <laughs> uh da da da. What do we need? Let's just grab a defensive merc. Something that's a high level. Here, sir. I've got you this, and i got you this. There's nothing the right potion can't go. Sir. Sir, my left leg is missing. And my right eye has popped out of its socket. 
And my ear is gone! Mike Tyson bit it off! There's nothing the right potion can't cure. Lisa, give me said potion! I need it now! I'm bleeding to death my femoral artery! Sir! Please! <laughs> Five percent chance to cast amplify damage. Yes, epic find in the store. Exactly what my mercenary needed. Exactly. Let us go into the hell. Actually, you know what? I need some potions. Potion. Does anyone ever use the damage potions? They seem like such a throwaway. Um, they're good for selling early on, B3. Um, definitely pick them up when you're low level, because they're great for... They're actually great for selling. Um, they're not so great for selling later on, when you have much higher value items to sell. And uh, and they're, they're certainly easy damage, that's for sure. Um, if you want to use them, it's really not a big deal. Just grab them. Put them on, use them. It's uh, they're, they're just they're they are throwaway items. Ha ha ha! ha. But um, bum tss. throwaway items. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at that amp damage already coming into fruition. Get him, Shalin. Shalom. That's Shalon over there, man. That's my dude. He got that amp damage spear. He got my amp damage spear. Gonna get everything because he's so awesome. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Barb is too squishy. <laughs> squish, squish, squish. Oh yeah, one to six lightning damage. Suckers gonna fear me. Man, I'm so lucky I found that amp damage spear. I need to find a better weapon. Um, Death's touch weapon, uh, or Death's touch war sword, is not the greatest weapon. Uh, especially when you get out of hell uh, normal difficulty. It's like, it's poop. It's a poopy weapon. You definitely need something better by the time you get to Nightmare. And uh, and having only two rows of belt slots is also very sad. It's a very sad. It's, a, it's, it's very sad. It's very sad. It's a decent set, Aetherite. There's better sets. There's better sets. I prefer, uh, I prefer Erathus. <laughs> Anybody who's been watching my channel for a while knows I, like, I always say Erathus. I'm like, Erathus. Like, which set? Erathus. No! Extra fast Venom Lords, you little punks. I bet you I had all my gold on me, too. I did have all my gold on me. That was so stupid of me. Why didn't I put any gold in my stash? Let that be a lesson to you guys. Put some gold in your stash. It's kind of important. I mean, yeah, you can wear Saigons at level 6, but a lot of the set requires a rather large amount of strength, so... 
Even though you can wear most of it at level 6, the problem with it is is that most of it requires like a rather large amount of strength. You do get a pretty decent amount of strength from the set, but it still requires a very large amount of strength. Especially the shield, the um, the armor, and, uh, and what other pieces? I'm trying to remember all the pieces. No. No. I think, yeah, a lot of people twink a bunch of plus strength charms and stuff like that, but D, D, D. I actually prefer um, Erathus. Saigons doesn't give you very much at all for what's the term? Resistances? It doesn't give you very much at all for resistances. Like um, if you're a character that uh, that has trouble with resistances, like maybe you're a Amazon that's not using a, a shield, so you're a, a bow Amazon, or maybe you're a Trying to think of like all the different, the really, really resistant kind of poor characters. Uh, druids tend to be sort of resistant, poor. Um, uh, Amazons tend to be resistant, poor. There's also the sorceress sometimes tends to be resistant, poor, especially if she's using a staff. Um, if you're a hurricane druid, yes, definitely. Hurricane druids have pretty good resistances. But that's not specifically what I was talking about. I was talking about more like a uh, druid using a two-handed weapon. That was more my thinking. I can't. Get my gold. You're also trolls. I want my gold. I was a druid. A were druid. Yeah, were druid. You were a druid. Where? I put an e on the end. That makes it look like the word were. Just, just do w e r. That's right. Level thirty ravens for the win. That's what you need. Level thirty ravens. All right, we're back in action. I think, perhaps. I'm gonna avoid those extra fast pit lords. I always hate extra fast pit lords. When you're when you're a any class that's a melee class, the extra fast pit lords always surround you in like ten seconds. Like you're, just, you're, you're like you're just completely surrounded and you can't get out. I always hated fighting the extra fast pit lords, especially uh, what's his face in the chaos sanctuary, um, infector of souls. Oh man, he's 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 awful for like some characters. He'll swarm and kill you in like a matter of seconds. You got to be careful with him. Imagine being able to leap. You know, if I had thought about that at the time. But I didn't think about that at the time, Onyx. You're just jealous that you aren't leaping on your barbarian. Stop being rude to my mercenary. You guys are just... Like, leave him alone. Why are you guys being so rude to him? I mean, I wasn't panicking so much as I just completely forgot that I could leap. I was like, hmm, I wonder if I'll be able to survive this. And I started attacking things, and things started dying, and I was like, yeah, I mean, things are dying, but they're not dying fast enough. And then, like, I didn't realize that the Venom Lords were extra fast, so in the time span it took me to be like, oh, I'm doing moderately okay, to, okay, wow, I'm surrounded. Like, it was a pretty quick little 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 bit of time there. And then, <laughs> and then I was like, um, I don't think I'm going to make it. So I cast a portal, you know, and then, uh, and I was like, maybe I can click on it. But no, I was desynced. So. Take double swing, please. Okay, I'll put one point into double swing. One point for you, Hedronaut. But let it be known, it's under protest. Under protest. I actually prefer building double swing uh, frenzy barbs. The only reason I'm building a whirlwind barbarian is because what you guys voted for. And yes, double swing is so much better. Oh, the double swing goodness. I got double swing and I can attack you and his wall's laughing at me because he has tons of HP. Ch 
popping. Am I on players eight still? Like, I swear I feel like I'm on players eight still. Oh, there we go. There's my amp. There's my amp damage. Oh, yeah, baby. Get some more points in the vitality. Chop it, chop it, chop, chop, chop. Isbol, Isbol has so much HP. They literally, I always use him as like a measuring stick on whether I'm doing good or not when I get to like this particular area. I'm like, how fast can I kill Isbol? And like, if I kill him really quickly, I'm like, okay, I'm doing pretty good. And if it takes, like, if I'm doing like this, I'm like, like, yeah, uh, I think I might need to get a better weapon a little bit. Uh, I might, I might need to go back to town. Upgrade my gear a little bit. Oh, I don't know. This is a little bad. And like, his wall can't kill me, so like, I'm like, I'm like, my defense is okay, but I'm like, yeah, I think I might. Like, cause even with amp damage, like, it's not. I don't know. It's, it's not really. <laughs> Good lord. I mean, but not this long though. Not this long though. Not this long. Like it really doesn't take this long. I mean, I, with with amp damage, I should be ripping through him. And that's what I, that's what we were just talking about. Death swords should have been replaced. Um, they definitely should be replaced before you leave normal. And as as uh, as they put it in chat. Uh, I can't remember who said it. Uh, they, they probably should have been replaced in Act 3, to be honest. When I left Act 3, I probably should have been like, uh, goodbye. Ooh. Maybe he'll drop me something. Maybe he'll drop me something good. He dropped me a Rail Rune. Uh, and a Gladius. What's this Gladius? Let's check this out. 10 to 22 with plus 2 men. It's almost better than Death's Touch Sword. <laughs> it's almost... I give plus 2 skill points though, guys. Alright, so... So shush. Alright, so... Uh, we can't get uh, Whirlwind because it's pretty far away. But what we can do is we can put more points into beautiful sword mastery. Beautiful, beautiful sword mastery. Uh, I'd love to build a frenzy bar. Frenzy bars are so much more fun. <laughs> they are so much more fun. I want to build a frenzy bar. If I was building a frenzy bar, I would totally be stacking up double swing. You don't even gotta tell me. I don't know. Mo points. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, Halibu over here has a sword for me. Halibu, what you got, buddy? What you got? You got some crap, some crap, some more crap. You got, ain't got no, nothing in here. Oh, yeah, War Sword of the Bat. Mmm, yes, ex excellent. War Sword of the Bat. A fine flamberge of quality. Oh yes, fine goods, Halibu. Fine goods. Yeah, it's weird. You know, it does have a rather large cold damage bonus. It has that nice uh, twenty-five to seventy-five cold. I even threw a freaking five to thirty fire damage uh, Ral rune in there, and the other one has a uh, seventy-five poison damage in it. So it's not like I'm doing like nothing. But his wall just has lots of health. He really does. As you can see, I'm not doing too badly with the rest of the monsters. But his wall, that's some chopping wood there. And that's why I'm saying, like, his wall is generally your guideline to how good am I doing at this particular point. Like, when you get to Act 4, go kill his wall, check your damage, see how long it takes you to kill him. That's a good guide point on how good your character is built at this particular point. Like, number one, is Iswal kicking your butt? Because if Iswal's kicking your butt, Diablo's probably going to wreck you. Um, number two, if it takes you forever to kill Iswal, you need more damage. Um, if you kill him fairly well, then you're usually you're okay. Um, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a thing. I mean, he is a very tanky boy, so he's a nice, he's a nice measuring stick. Especially in Hell difficulty, he's very tanky in Hell, and he has that nice Frost Nova that he spams. 
which uh, which the Frost Nova that he spams is a good test of do you have cannot be frozen yet? Because <laughs> at that point you're like, man, I think I really need cannot be frozen. As Iswal just incessantly spams Frost Nova on you, like repeatedly forever. It's not a freaking bad charm. Plus 25 to defense and plus 6 to dexterity. Is it just me or is that actually like a really nice little low level charm? Like that seems like something might hang on to and just like drop on some characters. Like some little lobies. <laughs> just be like here. Have this. Have this. Use it well my son. It well. That's something that I actually look forward to in Diablo 2 Resurrected. I don't know if you guys have uh, thought about this or not, but but like there's a lot of charms that we we chuck right in the bin bin because we really don't have a lot of space. And um, uh oh, here's that extra fast group. I got double swing now. Maybe I can make it. Maybe I can do it. No, you killed my Merc. How dare you! You are the rudest steel fangs ever. That was the name of the boss, by the way. God, double swing is so much more awesome than than just 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 it is. It's just such an awesome skill. And I can't believe what travesty it was in Diablo 2 Resurrected Beta. I was telling everybody, I'm like, I'm gonna build a double swing frenzy barb, and you guys are gonna be so wowed by how awesome it is. And they were not wowed. And 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 it was awful, and I was very sad. <laughs> I was first say it. First say. Maybe I'll find one Aetherite. Maybe I'll find one. I mean, one point in double swing isn't exactly a bad thing. It'll help me out for a little while until I uh, until I actually do get to whirlwind, and. Um, the mana cost on Whirlwind is going to be uh, awful, so I'm going to have to figure that out as well. I need some mana steel, y'all. Lots and lots of mana steel everywhere we go. Where did I leap? When did I leap? I leaped nowhere. I, st I stood and fought like a man, like a Barbera man. Ah, the Barbarianist man, the Barbera man. Well, it's uninterruptible, which is nice. So, like, when I got stuck in a whole bunch of monsters like that, um, you know, they wouldn't have been able to stop me from attacking, which is which is nice. Impossible. My leap is so short. I forgot. It's only a 7.3 yard leap. It's only 7.3 yards. It's really, really short. City of the Damned. I meant the innate higher damage from the skill of Concentrate. Dang cops. What's up, buddy? Um, I'm on single player right now just to show off stuff. It's, uh... I, I had to kind of, like get this character to the right point and, uh, and uh, give them some gear and whatnot so I didn't want I didn't want to bother wasting you guys time so I actually got him there you know with hero editor um, this particular guy um, I wanted I didn't want to like bore you guys with act one and act two which is uh, something that we've played a lot recently if any of you guys were in the beta you know exactly what I mean you did a lot of act one and act two. A whole lot of like one in Act 2. So much. So many Durial kills. So many scrolls of Town Portal. So many. So many scrolls of Town Portal. Oh lord. Why does Durial drop so many scrolls of Town Portal though? Like, that's a whole thing. 
I mean, I, I, I think I can kind of figure it out in my head. So, like, I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm like, okay, so why does Duriel drop Scrolls of Town Portal? And the reason why he drops Scrolls of Town Portal probably has something to do with getting stuck in the Tomb of Talrasha. Because think about it. You can't get out of the Tomb of Talrasha, right? You can't get out. So, if you can't get out of the Tomb of Talrasha, then uh, you need a Scroll of Town Portal. So what would happen if you made it into Duriel's tomb without any scrolls of town portal and for some reason or another you just couldn't get out? You would need a scroll of town portal to get out. So I guess that's why they made Duriel like have a really high chance to drop scrolls of town portal. <laughs> I guess. By the way, you're not allowed to teleport when you're in um, Duriel's throne room. Or his little, his little room, right? But did you know that you can actually teleport out of his room and you don't even have to kill Duriel? There's actually a way. I tell you what. If one of you guys in chat can tell me the way that you can teleport out of Duriel's throne room and it's not the Sorceress's teleport skill... Um, I will give you a sub. How about that? How do you teleport out of Duriel's throne room? Nope, it's not Telly Ami. So if you specifically try to teleport out of the throne room, like if you target outside of the throne room and you right click, it will not let you do it. It does not work. As far as I know, there's only one way. No, it's a it's an actual teleport. Neverworld. You're very close, Neverworld. You're very, very close. I'm not giving it away. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Must resist. I mean, you don't really cheese Duriel with this method. He doesn't die, so Duriel's still alive. <laughs> he is very much still alive. Um... You're just not in his room anymore. That's all. That's all it is to it. So you leave his room, and he's stuck in his room, and and that's and that's all there is to that. Ding 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 ding. Yes, Oculus will teleport you out of Duriel's throne room. Of course, you got to get beat in the head by Duriel to make it happen. Because Oculus teleports you a random spot, it teleports you somewhere random in the vicinity of where you got hit. So it's a chance on being struck to teleport you away from basically the monster that hits you. I can't remember the percentage of Oculus, but it's it's not the greatest. Um, but if but if you're like by the door and Duriel hits you, it teleports you out of the throne room, and so you're on the other side of the door. And the first time it happened to me, I was like, "Wait a minute!" It's like, "What the hell has happened?" And um, and yes, it it totally teleports you outside the door. And. Pink. Oh wow, there's a discount on subs. If you guys want to sub, it's uh, it's twenty for twenty percent off for subbing. I didn't even see that. So uh, so I just got twenty percent off for uh, gifting this sub to Aetherite. Congratulations, Aetherite. Now you can uh, spam chinchilla emotes with the best of them. 
you got little Chonchula Heart, and you got Chonkers, and you got, uh, <laughs> and you got Chinchilla on shoulder. That's not Chinchilla Heart. This, this Chinchilla Heart right here. That's, that's Chinchilla Heart. <laughs> Sub timber. That's pretty funny. Well, we're kind of ripping through the regular monsters, so I'm not really worried. And with amp damage, whenever amp damage procs. Actually, rip, rip straight through whatever monster has amp damage on him. What's my damage now? 184. Could be better. Could be better. I am uh, still super excited for Diablo 2 Resurrected. I can't wait. I have a whole bunch of uh, ideas for new videos, by the way. Um, I'm going to probably start making them once I finish this day of series so you know obviously we're going to be doing this day of series until I finish all of the, all of the classes and speaking of uh, the next day of series we need to decide what is the next video so uh, this is this is where viewers like you uh, get to make the decision um, so I'm going to put up a poll here in a minute and uh, day of the Merc I already have a whole Merc video Onyx um, but that would, that's still, that's not a terrible idea. <laughs> that's, that's actually not a terrible idea at all. So I'm going to put up a poll here in a minute, and it's going to be a vote for the next uh, day of. So we've already done day of the necromancer, day of the assassin, um, day of the sorceress, and did we do three or four? I can't even remember. Dear God help me, the days are blending together. I'm just trying to keep myself busy until the, uh, the day of the pal paladins. So yes, we've done four classes so far. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to manage a poll for the Neowals. Alright, so day of the next. Day of the next. <laughs> day of the next class. So uh, Druid, Amazon, and I did Necro. Yes, I did Necro. Um, so I already did Necromancer. Paladin, Assassin, and Sorceress. And we just did Barbarian. So that's Amazon and, and uh, Druid are the two left. So it's only a, a two a two horse race here. So uh, your votes are really going to count. Alright, so get your votes up. I'm going to pull this vote up so you guys can see it. So we can see the tally as it rolls. Hopefully that shows up on the uh, stream. Yes, it does. Alright. And, uh, and I do reward my members for, for watching, so you can spend chinchilla turds on there if you'd like, your, your, your channel points. And, uh, and you can also spend bits if you want to. I don't really care. If you want to support the channel, it's, that's, uh, that is up to you. But uh, the channel points in particular, I actually really like you guys to use on the votes because uh, I feel like it rewards the people who have been here the longest and uh, who watch the most. So, you know, they get a, a bigger say in, in the way things go. So feel free to chinchilla turn it up. Both classes are actually going to be really fun to talk about. I'm actually excited about both of them. I really love Amazon, um, and um, I think Druid is a very popular one, although I think a lot of people played Druid on the... Uh, on the beta test, so maybe they weren't so excited for Day of the Druid. But um, I do know Druid is a, a particularly a popular class. Um, and after we do this vote, we will also decide on uh, what what build to play on the particular class that you guys decide on. So uh, so we'll 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 do that vote next. Life tap. Ain't nothing on that jank. Put Ort Rune in my helmet. 
Why not? It'll help me against DeBoblo. DeBoblo. I got this jank all twinked up. Twinked. <laughs> so, so twinked. Day of Gahid the game. That's, that's a whole topic there, man. That is a whole topic. I'm not even going to lie. That's a topic. I actually had a whole video planned um, for, like, Day of the Vendor. I wasn't really going to call it Day of the Vendor, but it, it just I thought it was a really neat idea to uh, to make a video on vendors and, uh, and, like, all about the vendors and what equipment they can sell and what good equipment there is. But, like, man, it's complicated. And it's going to take me a little while to make that video. It's not going to be a quick one, that's for sure. Wow, look at Druid winning by a mile. Poor Amazon. Poor Manazon is going to be last. Nobody likes the Manazon. Nobody likes me. A teleport charge staff is a must buy on everyone except Sor. I actually had a really cool uh, amulet on my Paladin for ladder. It was like one of the first finds I found. It was plus one to Paladin skills with, uh, with like 45 teleport charges. I thought that was pretty awesome. You guys are rude. You little bone spirits. That's right. Da. Ah. Come over here, away from your decrepify masters. Wow, whiskey bree. Harsh words from the from the whiskey drinker. She looking like the Green Goblin. I mean, she used to look like William Defoe, and now she just looks like Squidward. Dang, twenty three percent lightning resist. I'm already capped on lightning, aren't I? Or twenty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I saw they have crazy CC potential on stream. Mentor did earlier. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, my bow, bow Amazons B3? Bow Amazons do have really nice uh, CC potential. They're actually really amazing CCers. I love uh, I love playing a, um, a Freezing Arrow Amazon. I think Freezing Am Arrow Amazons are like the bee's knees. Being able to freeze like every single target that you shoot at in place and just laugh at them is is probably one of the most fun things about Amazon, and uh, and and you could you could draw a parallel to a glacial spike sorceress, but glacial spike does not go through targets, and um, and you can actually build a Javazon slash freezing arrow Amazon. It's pretty fun because freezing arrow only takes. Um, 40, I think it's 40 point investment because Ice Arrow only increases the duration so if you're going to build a Freezing Arrow Amazon you're probably going to build Ice Arrow but um, but if you're not going to build specifically a Freezing Arrow Amazon um, you can avoid Ice Arrow which only increases the duration of the, um, of the freeze and then you can build uh, Lightning Fury as well which is pretty cool and Lightning Fury and Freezing arrow are both gonna have uh, your your penetrate, so you're gonna want like pretty nice penetrate with both of those skills, so your skills are going through targets. Yeah, and it's an AOE damage effect too, so it's even better than Bone Spear. Bone Spear is just a single target. You know, you can line it up and you can hit like four or five targets, but but uh, since Freezing Arrow has that nice, you know, like like it's like three point three yard little freeze. It hits like everything if you cluster it up, and that's usually what you do is you spend a little bit of time 
and you cluster up the the groups. You know, you get you get a little bit of uh, of work in to make it happen, and then you fire your arrow off, and it hits like everything, and they just all die in an explosion of frost. It's really nice. If you can group everything up very tight, like especially when you're fighting ghosts, because ghosts all stack up on top of each other, like the the amount of damage that you can do is just absolutely massive. Imagine if you will, you have like 13 ghosts on top of each other and you pierce through every single ghost and all the ghosts are within 3.3 meter range of each other. So they're all taking the radial effect from every single other ghost that got hit. So 13 times whatever your damage is on freezing arrow to every single target within range. And the numbers start to stack up pretty darn fast. Lightning Fury is the same way. It's just you don't have to pack them up as tightly. You just need more monsters. What do you need? Although, you know, don't don't get me wrong, you know, if you if you pack them up into little groups, it definitely does help with Lightning Fury. It's just not as important for um, Lightning Fury as it is for Freezing Arrow because Freezing Arrow only has a 3.3 yard AoE whereas um, Lightning Fury has, you know, a huge AoE effect which hits everything nearby. Sons are fun. They used to be a lot more fun back in the day, but they're fun. They're fun. Try resistances, attack rating. I found another Gladius. Repairs durability, damage to undead. Woo, you guys. Man, y'all don't know. Guided was fun. I used to love it when Guided pierced. I thought that they had taken it away in PvP, not PvM. I was trying to make a guided arrow Amazon like a couple months ago, and I was like, they took it away in PvM too? I was like, that's that's crappy. They should have left it in PvM. It was fun in PvM. I used to love shooting off like 30 or 40 of them things at Diablo and watching them go ding 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 just back and forth. Oh, here we go. Here's the path. Here's the souls. No, leave my little Chalan alone. Don't do it. I ran away to save you, Merc. Don't die. I always hated how, even with like 70% uh, lightning resistance, or 75% lightning resistance, a lot of the times you would end up um, still getting your butt kicked by freaking Diablo's stupid little lightning crap. His li his lightning, uh, like inferno thing, or whatever you want to call it, lightning inferno, I guess would be the right term, it's freaking broken as all get out. Watch him freaking one shot me with that thing. I got 70% lightning resistance. Let's let him. I'm gonna let him hit me. All right. Let's see how much damage his little lightning inferno does. He's over here like, no, no, I'm not gonna use it. No, you're just gonna show it off on camera. And you're gonna say it's OP, and then I'm gonna get nerfed, and then the, the devs are gonna come in. And they're gonna be like, Diablo, you can't have this anymore. I'm like, no, no, I'm not gonna use it. No. See, and he didn't even use it. Oh, sweet. Sweet Merc weapon. Razor Tine. Yes. Oh, but I lose my amp damage. No, but I gain slow's target by. Yes, but I lose slow's. Oh, no. Yes, no. Mm. 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 It's such a tough. It's such a toughie. I'm going to I'm going to give him the I'm going to give him that. That's that's important. That's important for him. It's important. I'm pretty sure that's better than his eyes and hearts by like a mile. And you can't. Why can't you use that? Oh, he's level 23. Okay, well. And an ethereal throwing knife. Man, Diablo gave me the best drops, yo. Best drops. These are the best drops. Y'all don't even know. 
Repairs durability war axe. Okay, well, this is not much better damage than what I have on. The helmet's no good. That's no good. I don't need that. I guess I could sit in there. Need more potions. Level 24. I gotta go kill the ancients now. Oh, let's go kill the ancients. Oh, let's go kill the ancients. Let's go kill the ancients after all. Alright, we're gonna cheat a little bit because uh, I'm not trying to waste you guys' time forever. So we are going to uh, hack ourselves a hack a, a hack ourselves in. We're gonna hack ourselves in some waypoints. Some weighty, some weighty dough points. So all these boops and things you hear in the background, that's me, that's me hacking in some waypoints. Hacker, I'm hacking in some waypoints. Waypoints, normal, act five, ancient's way, save, done. Why you always overflow? I can't even close you out with you throw out you throwing errors. Double press till you kill Shank. Afternoon. What's up, Larzik? Got anything good in here? Crystal swads. You have tried. Salutations. Double the price until I kill Shank. Terrible. You mean Mala be ripping me off? Ain't the right Mala be ripping me off? Mala, why you do this? All right, I said I'd build a whirlwind barbarian, and that's what we're gonna do. I've gotta get myself to level 30, though. I mean, I always kill Shank. I mean, that's like the first thing I do, so. But this time, not this time. Cause I'm in a rush, and we gotta go. We gots to go. Wonder if I can even kill the ancients. Will it be like my Iswald wood chopping adventure? Just chopping that wood and chopping that wood. Just chopping, chopping, chopping and chopping the wood. I know what. I'll just jump inside them and stab them from the inside, like, uh, like on Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, the new barbarian does look like, uh, like him after all. He really does. My girlfriend's hilarious. I had to watch. Mm. Dude, they get also I was playing in beta and we came across a monster in like Den of Evil that had fanaticism and I'm like, dude, how you get fanaticism? We're in level one Den of Evil. What kind of hacks you using? And then I think we were in like catacombs and there was a freaking monster with conviction and I'm like I'm like what Y'all some hackers. That's some level 30 skills, okay? Those are level 30 skills.
Y'all's a ruid. That's one of the bad things, I think, about uh, building a mastery is that you get tied into that weapon. And um, one thing that you can't do is if you do happen to find, like, a really amazing, oh my god, weapon, you know, you can always go respec. Like, if that's, if, if, if you found, like, the godlike weapon of the gods, you know, maybe it's a good time to go back to town and think about your life choices. Um... Speaking of life choices, uh, mercenary, let's go, buddy. I know you're level 21 and you can't get EXP here, but let's go. Or like a bone snap. A bone snap would be a good one. If I found a bone snap, that would be a good. That'd be a good respec one. Yeah, yeah, the bone snap. There's a little bone snap mall. You can run around bone snapping things. Who doesn't like the bone snap? Let's bone snap together. I've done a bone snap sealer. Wow. I think I did a bone snap sealer a long time ago. Ages ago, though. This was probably back in like 1.04 or something. Or 1.05. I don't know. Something like that. It was a long time ago. I remember it was pre-LOD. I still remember, like, uh, before they made the uniques into, like, really good items. And the sets into really good sets. Um, there was a whole time where the sets and the uniques were absolute garbage. And, like, despite the fact that they were unique items, they weren't even very good items. Like, they were crappy. And, uh, and I remember just, like, being enamored with these unique items. And I remember trying to build entire characters around them. Like, uh, I don't know if you remember Ice Blink in Classic. Ice Blink in Classic was pretty good. And uh, the ability to freeze targets was, like, amazing. And you could build, like, an Ice Blink Zealer or, like, an Ice Blink Whirlwind Barb. And it was pretty, it was pretty legit. Especially since they didn't have, like, uh, all the restrictions on Freeze's target as they do now. Um, nowadays, they have a lot of restrictions on Freeze's target. Um, you know, you can't... Uh, what's the term? You can't just freeze targets anymore. Like, there is a, um, a duration of the freeze. The monsters have, like, half duration and so forth and so on. And, like, each freeze's target's effect, like, adds to the overall total and so forth and so on. And so it's like, it's like a whole thing. Ow. Who had the knockback? Who knocking me back like that? I don't remember any of these guys knocking back. I feel like I'm imagining things. Dude, a freaking Mad Dog has not knockback on one of his weapons. I kid you not. I've never seen that before. I know that they could spawn with random effects. And that the random effects, you know, and, and like abilities and stuff like that can, can really play havoc on you. But freaking Maudak over here has like knockback on his throwing axes. I've never seen that before in the entire time I've played this game. He's literally knocking me back with his throwing axes. I've never seen that before. Man, this game amazes me every single time I play it. I did not know Maudak Maudak could have knockback on his throwing axes. Mordok. That's right, I got battle orders now. I know you guys are jealous. Oh, yeah. Suka, suka, nah. Yeah, boy. Let me in. Random weapons on the ancients is a nice idea. I'm gonna be honest with you. There have been times where I swear the ancients have been like unkillable. Like they're not always unkillable, and most of the time, if you've got an overpowered character, they're pretty easy to kill. But man, I have seen times where like the freaking ancients will spawn with these crazy modifiers and immunities, and and you just go in there and you're like, what the what the what the 
the what the what? As they like rip you to shreds. Like Modok with extra fast, extra strong is kind of OP. <laughs> he's he's kind of broken. And uh, you know, and there's other ways that he can be broken too, but like I mean, extra fast is already really scary, but when you tie it into a like a ranged a ranged character like Modok or like one of the monster, one of them has um, conviction. If they've got like aura enchanted and they spawn with conviction, and that can be a real pain in the butt too. And uh, I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. Somebody next needs to make a mod for Diablo where you can craft. Um, little battlegrounds, essentially, with monsters that exist within the game, and you get to choose what effects those monsters have, and the the effects have to be possible within the game. So they have to like everything has to be something that is possible within the game. And if and and then what you do is you upload these little battlegrounds, exactly the same as like Super Mario Maker or something like that. And you upload upload these little battlegrounds, and then people actually, you know, download them and try and beat them. And I think this would just be the, the most fun thing in the world. Like I swear, like you would just people would come up with the most ridiculous OP combos, and you would just have to to try and beat them. Like, like imagine like this is the combo. All right, so inside this little room is. A unique pack of ghosts, which is immune to physical and immune to um, cold, and uh, inside, and and they are aura enchanted with conviction. And then there's also a unique pack of moon lords, which are extra fast, extra strong, physical immune with uh, lightning immunity, and uh, they are aura enchanted with fanaticism. And then a third pack of monsters is in the room, and that third pack of monsters. Um, is let's see, let's let's think of like a really evil pack of monsters. Oh, uh, black souls, black souls, and they are immune to fire and uh, physical damage, and uh, they are aura enchanted too, and uh, they have. Let's see, what aura do they have? I'm trying to think of a really evil aura, just like the worst, the worst of auras. Hmm. Oh, holy freeze! They're running holy freeze. There you go. Perfect. And then you gotta like pull your character in there and you gotta try and beat this combination of monsters that I just uh, I just stated. And have fun with that. <laughs> and mummies <laughs> to res the undead souls. Sure, yes. Mummies to res the undead souls. Great. I love it. Um, I actually got confirmation that they're not. So there was a post by Rod Ferguson, and uh, he was talking with somebody who was like petitioning for changes to the game or something. And apparently later on, he made a um, a comment on somebody else's post who was asking for personal loot. And um, and Rod said something about we're you know we're listening or we we're discussing everything or something like that. And then literally someone responded to him and was like, "You can't be serious." Blah blah blah. It was like really offensive. And he's like, he's like, chill out. He goes, we're not going to do it. He's like, but, you know, we can listen. Or we can talk about things or something like that. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so he basically said in a nutshell, they're not. They're not doing it. Personal loot, I refund my game. I mean, it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big deal. It's a pretty big change. I think it fundamentally changes Diablo in a way that makes it not Diablo. Well, that's that's my opinion. It fundamentally changes the game so that it's not Diablo anymore. I already answered the count question, Francis.
I mean, it's more than that. And, and I was discussing this earlier on my, uh, my Discord. And um, the difference between personal loot and global loot is so vast that it's... One, one is, is interaction with other people. One is trading and, and seeing the items that drop. And everybody gets to know that, you know, X item dropped and this person got the item um, and so forth and so on. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a whole culture revolving around forced interaction through the means of loot. Loot is literally the way that the interaction is forced. Like, say, for instance, um, a Zod rune dropped on the ground. Everybody would start talking with each other. They'd be like, oh, my God, a Zod rune dropped. And they'd be like, really? Who got it? And somebody would be like, I got it. And they'd be like, no way, I don't believe you. And then they'd open up a trade window, and they'd put the Zod rune in there. And they'd be like, oh, my God, he really did get it. And they'd be like, how much do you want for it? I'll give you two Zod runes. And then, you know, and, and so, so ensues the hilarity. But if that kind of stuff doesn't happen, then no communication happens. And, and without communication, there's no friendships. And without friendships, there's no Diablo. Um, that kind of forced communication is something that's at the very core of, uh, of Diablo 2. Somebody who's super excited, Aetherite, okay? People who are super excited spend more than they should for things. And you know this to be true. You do know this to be true. It uh, it tends to be a thing where people will overpay for things just simply because they're excited and it's the first time they've seen one. That's the first time I've seen one in like three years. I'll give you my ethereal breath of the dying. You know, and you're like, sure, sure, yeah, yeah I'll take it. All right, take it. Yep, yep. I'll take it. I'll take the ethereal breath of the dying. I mean, it's got a Zod rune in it. I don't even know why. It's I'm not going to talk you out of it. All right, I'm not going to talk you out of it. Not only that, this game has an economy through trade, personalized loot, kills that is one of its major gripes for Destiny as well. Because one person can get an exotic four or five times, and someone who has run a raid a hundred times won't get it once. You're talking about the um, the terrible personal loot drops where literally one person will have an item like six times drop for them and the person who actually needs it like literally will run that same raid with that person the same t number of times and not get the drop even once and the person who got it six times cannot give it to the person who hasn't gotten it yet because you know reasons What's up, Suelo the One? I am playing Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction, in preparation for Diablo 2 uh, Resurrected, which are essentially the same game. Um, the difference is really the graphics and the quality of life fixes. So if you want to play Diablo 2 right now, Suelo One, you can actually buy it and download it off of the uh, Blizzard store. Of course, if you want to wait for Diablo 2 Resurrected, that's also a thing. Obviously, I'm not waiting, so I've already made my choice. Um, or you can you can hang out here with us, and you can chat and learn about Diablo 2, You know, while we're uh, while we're waiting. Um, that's that's kind of the the goal here. Is you know we're we are preparing for Diablo 2 Resurrected. We're waiting for Diablo 2 Resurrected. We're we're trying not to uh, to go crazy waiting for Diablo 2 Resurrected. That's that's the goal. HD 6850. You might be able to play it. I had an HD um, 60 something hundred, and that's actually not a bad card. You you actually might be able to play. Um, I actually have a video Aether Wright of me running it on a rather poor system. And if I remember correctly, HD 6850 is very similar. Militant said it took me eight months to get my get a galley. Ended up getting two in the same raid, but on the flip side, I got a, a mythoclast in my very first vault of glass. I had somebody at work uh, who I've been talking to who plays a lot of Destiny. Um, his name's Dakota. If you're watching Dakota, hello. 
Um, it's, he plays a lot of Destiny, and he was talking about the Vault of Glass the other day. Um, he was also talking about how literally he had one of his friends who ran a raid a bunch of times and couldn't get the item, and he had like three. So that was a whole thing, too. I wouldn't launch the program? What did it, uh, what did it say, Aether, right? I do know that um, it requires Windows 10 for some reason, although I bet there'll probably be a patch for that at some point. <sighs> Frickin' Decrepify, man. Frickin' Decrepify! Frickin' hate Decrepify. They got freaking fear frenzy, and I've got Decrepify on me. It's just like amplifying the pain. I don't think he streams. I don't think so. I don't, at least he never mentioned to it to me that he's a streamer. Besting the evening. Yes, I'm gonna get my bike man back. Always. Do not question the bike man. I actually need to refresh him, believe it or not. He's he's too low level. Um, he won't. He actually is below the threshold to level up here, so I actually have to. Um, I have to replace him. So you need to be like level twenty four at least to get exp, and he's level twenty one, so he's currently below the threshold. If I can get a level twenty five, that would be good. And there's only one level twenty five, and that's offensive. Whatever. I'll take it. I'm not going to cry about it. Mm. At least I'll actually be able to level up. I'll put that to good use. I'll put that to good use. Yeah, you can go back to areas where he will get EXP, but you won't get EXP. So it's um, it's a thing. It's a thing. All right, so I'm level 26. I can put a couple more points to the Sword Mastery, and I can beef up my Fatalitals. You made a, a mod for Diablo 1 and Hellfire in 1999? Nice! I freaking love Diablo 1. I played that uh, a lot when I was a kid. Uh, well, your mercs that you buy in, um, in Act 1 have the highest stats. Uh, so if you buy your mercs in Act 2 or Act 3, they have lower stats than the ones you buy in Act 1. Um, I don't know why that is. I just know that it is. So you might be comparing um, like a Merc that you got in Act 1 to a Merc that you bought in Act 3. Or, or sorry, in uh, Hell Difficulty as opposed to a Merc that you you know bought in, in Normal Difficulty. So always buy your Mercs in Normal Difficulty if you don't need the, um, the Act 2 or say the Nightmare version auras. And I'm fumbling my words a whole lot here. No, I don't live in Pennsylvania. I live in Virginia. <coughs> oh, please, no bots. Don't make bots. No, ni, no, ni, no. Spend your time making something more valuable. Bots, no. Bad, bad, bad. Lorenzo. I mean, we can pretty much expect two things to happen. Number one, the bots will actually get some policing, which means that um, that we won't have to worry about there being like. 10 quadrillion bots and the bots outnumbering the human population 10 to 1. So that's a thing. All right. But it's not like we're going to just completely eliminate them off the face of the planet. Um, the bots are there for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to find items. And they take the items and then sell them on, uh, on websites like JSP. So 
another thing that we can expect is that because the bots will be policed and because the bots will not be able to function out in the open, you can also expect the bots to uh, increase the prices of the items that they're selling. So they're probably going to cost a lot more than, um, than the bots in Diablo 2. So, you know, maybe you can pick up a, 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 a pack of jaw runes for like $10 on uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected, or Diablo 2, but in Diablo 2 Resurrected, your pack of jaw runes is probably going to cost you quite a bit more. Which I, uh, I, I will actually enjoy the prices of items going up. Because as far as I'm concerned, nobody should be able to just walk into a game, drop down $100, and have an endgame character with the best equipment known to man. That's, uh, that's stupid. It's, it's really, it's really quite dumb. It's dumb. I mean, there was one guy, I can't remember his name, I was playing, I was streaming one day, and he popped in and he had his little, you know, his little attitude, and he was PvP, and then he came in and he killed me on stream. He had, like, the most ridiculous equipment I think I've ever seen. He, like, he even showed it to me. Like, every single bit of it was, like, perfect, like, best-in-slot equipment. And then, and after he showed me the equipment, he told me he bought it all on JSP. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then there was another guy apparently he bought like a a pack of jaw runes I don't even know how many jaw runes it was but apparently it was a lot and uh, there was another guy he comes into my um, he comes into my stream all the time and uh, he was telling me that this guy was trading him, like, jaw runes for absolute junk. Like, the dude would put, like, a charm up on the screen. He'd be like, here, you want this 25 6 dexterity charm? And the dude would just slap a jaw rune up there, and he would trade for it. And, like, apparently he got, like, 10 or 20 jaw runes from this guy, trading them absolute junk. And, uh... <laughs> And uh, he's like, he comes into the game and he's like, here, you want some of them? And he starts like dropping jaw runes on the ground. And I'm like, I'm like, sure, I'll take a couple jaw runes. No, they weren't duped. He just, he went on JSP and he freaking bought a pack of them. He, uh, he probably spent like $20 on a pack of jaw runes. So that's what he did. I'm not doing any damage because they're just bashing me away. Come over here, Hazade. There we go. Isolate some of them from the others. One of you is not like... Will you stop bashing me away from Hazade? I didn't mean to leave you. I meant to stay. And I can't do any damage to these guys. Why can I not do any damage to these guys? I handled every single one of these bosses just fine, but can't damage these guys to save my life. Hmm... Must have been the jaw runes. Let's do this again. Sold bumpers and names. I mean, yeah, Decrepify does. Uh, you know, that's probably a good idea. I'll uh, I'll head out of the uh, of that area. See if that helps out. Just get away from uh, from Bale, so he's not constantly Decrepifying me. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go this way. Come on, Hazade, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Hey, what's up, Lister? What's up, my dude? I heard you like mudkips, sir. Yeah, it's Decrepify. Decrepify absolutely ruining my damage, I see. And they are just picking on Hazade, man. They are just picking on him so bad. What did he do to you exactly? Stop bashing me to death. I want to kill Lister. See, this is why nobody likes you, minions of destruction. Nobody likes you. Always bashing people. The old age curse. Why do I need to leap? Why am I leaping? I'm leaping, I'm leaping, I'm leaping. Okay. I'm leaping. I remembered to leap. I'm going to get my Merc back. I'm going to get my dog back. I'm going to get my cat back. I'm going to get my best friend's truck back. You too can prevent forest fires. Come on, Merc. Let's go get buffs. Come on, buddy. Don't run away from me. I'm trying to buff you. Let's go. We ain't got time. I mean, I feel like it ain't going nowhere, Onyx. But I do feel like the millions and millions of new players that come in are probably going to have no clue that it exists. I feel like the console players in particular are probably going to have absolutely no clue about it. And I think that's a good thing. The um, the PC players, on the other hand, the ones that already know, will probably have a lot more of an idea. I think Bear just hit his head on the couch. Come this way, sir. Away from the Decrepify spammer. Well, what I'm hoping happens, and this is and this is my uh, my optimistic outlook on things, is that the banning of the bots and the decrease of the overall number of items will cause the items on the JSP website to be uh, inflated in price to the point where the forum gold cost of those items is rather extreme. And, uh, and at that point, um, when the prices of those items becomes untenable, um, only the people who have large, large amounts of forum gold will be able to afford anything at all. And, um, and either that or they'll have to spend absorbent amounts of money into the system to make it work. And um, I think just in general, we'll see a, a decline in the number of people who are purchasing their gear from D2JSP, just simply because they might not be able to afford it. Um, the bots, I think, are going to get policed to the point where the item cost is going to go up and up and up, and, uh, and that's a good thing. Is this a speed run or a char you've been gearing? What's up, General Rot? No, this is Day of the Barbarian, General Rot. We're just having fun. We're talking about barbarians um, for basically the entire first, I don't know, like two hours of this video. We pretty much just spent talking about uh, barbarians. I went over every single skill. I went over every single, like, like sort of... I don't want to say build, but like every single different way that like you could use the skills and stuff like that. Talked about item find, um, stuff like that. And uh, and they specifically chose a whirlwind barbarian, so I'm just having some fun getting there. Um, but I didn't start playing this character until like hour three or something like that. I can't remember. Or hour, maybe it was hour two and a half. You can't even afford healing potions. Where the hell is, is my work in there attacking? You better be in there attacking. I got time. That's right. You better level up fine potion. If it's too expensive to find to buy potions, you might want to level up fine potions so you can actually get some. That is my magic charm B3. I mean Al Bundy. Ah, 
Ow, you and your stupid... Thanks. No! How, why did you take out my Merc? You're so rude! Bailey Ailey rude! Bailey Ailey rude. Only OGs to this stream will get that joke. What joke? What joke are we getting? I'm an OG to this stream. <laughs> I forgot about the hidden Diablo video they had in the original Diablo. Bail! I'm gonna need you to die. My will not have died in I didn't unclick you, sir. I already know that it's you. Okay, that one is the clone because I'm still clicked on you. And that's the important thing in the bail throne room. You make sure you clicked on bail. And you gave me crap. Always with the crap. Never drop me anything good. Boo. What the hell is that? That's awful. This rondel has better damage than than my sword. What's up, Tyrael? Let's go to Nightmare. Day of the Barb will be known as Poner of Things. It's not the size of the blade, it's how you use it. That's right. It's not the size of the blade. Uh, but it's the motion of the elbow. It's not the size of the blade, but the motion of the elbow. Kasha. Give me a merc. Alright, we've got this at four hours now. We've been for four hours. It's pretty surprising how long we play, and I, I just I still I'm having fun. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go fast forward this just a tiny bit so we can get our whirlwind because uh, I don't want to waste all you guys' day, and uh, we're gonna start whirlwinding things. How about that? So I only need two levels to get to whirlwind. It's not a big deal, or is it three levels? Two, two or three. Well, well, hey, you hear some beeps in the background. That's me playing around in Hero Editor. Beep, 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 beep. Mm. Yes, Hero Editor, we understand. You can never find the directory of which I show you where it is every day. But that's okay. Your memory is very short, and we know this. I should probably give myself better weapons, too, but I'm not cheating that far. Quests. <laughs> Skills. Here we go. Alright, level 30. Woo! Skill points. We were at level 27, 28, 29, 30, so three points. Three, and we had one point already, so four points. Save. And beep, 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 beep. Done. Stack overflow. Oh, we're level 30, guys. Look at that. Man. What do you know? Man, that was amazing. That was fast. Oh, we leveled up quick, guys. That was like, that was that was brutal fast. Oh, yeah, man. I know you guys are jealous. Oh, and we got our battle commands now. Look at this. We are level 30. Look at all these beautiful skills we've got now. Man. I know you guys are jealous. 75% of people person of personnel drop tell me it's not true. Francis, Francis, we talked about this. I've already confirmed it's not happening, okay? I told you, I got confirmation. That's not are you you know what? I'm gonna link it to you. How about that? I'm gonna link it to you and then and then you can just you can you can just know that it's not happening.
Where is it? Rod. Rod. Where are you, Rod? Boop. Twitter post. Here you go. Paste. Paste it. And I'm going to read it, too, okay? I'm going to read it. So, somebody commented, who amongst you are bored and sore? And so this was, uh, this was a post for the, um, the barbarian. And uh, somebody commented in here and said, uh, any chance of putting a loot setting for co-op? Um, and Rod Ferguson said, not for launch, but it's something the team continues to discuss. And then somebody else was like, going crazy about it like they literally made this post that it was absolutely like like they were just about to blow blow a gasket and rod ferguson replied take a deep breath and relax we're not doing it i think it's okay to have a dis the discussion and understand the implications and expectations of other players you're literally fighting against something that isn't being done blur that's about as damning as you can ever possibly get on the subject. It's not being done. And I bet you micro RNA on the forums, who's been fighting for personal loot for about 18 trillion years, by the way, um, is, is just absolutely crying his eyeballs out at this point. Because the dude has literally been posting every single day for like 18 million years about... <laughs> about him wanting personal loot and now we finally have a confirmation that it's not happening so I'm sure he's not happy about this but uh, but the guy is, is nothing if not the denier of worlds so he's probably denying the fact that the post even exists to this point yes please continue pan panicking though go ahead Please continue panicking. Everybody's dancing happy in this post too. Except for microRNA. MicroRNA is crying his little eyeballs out. I would hate personal loot, but I can see why most wouldn't like it. I honestly think it would be absolutely awful. Not only would it be an awful option just in general, B3, but I think um, it would honestly break the game. I think in general it would, uh, it would completely ruin every aspect of what makes Diablo 2 so special. It's not just about it being a good option for an ARPG. It's about, is it a good option for Diablo 2? Diablo 2 Resurrected is supposed to represent everything that Diablo 2 was, and you have to think about it in the terms of, does it, does it still create an accurate representation of what Diablo 2 is? I mean, there's this whole quote on, on, the, um, on one of the Q&As by uh, Rob Ferguson. And he talks about this inventory system that they had created. Um, he specifically says, we created this inventory system for controllers, which was more like a list-based system, um, because we felt like the inventory Tetris would be really difficult for controller players. And he goes on to say that um, the system worked very well. And not only did it work very well, but it was extremely easy to use, it was intuitive, and, uh, and overall they felt like it was a very, very good system right but then rod says he says but when we put the system in it didn't feel like diablo anymore and and so we started to judge things based upon does this game still feel like diablo like if we make this change does it still feel like diablo and um 
And so what they did was they took this inventory system that they created and they threw it right in the garbage. And they and he said we threw it in the garbage because it, it made the game not Diablo anymore. And that was the problem. And so we decided that it wasn't worth keeping because the game because it, it just it didn't follow what we were trying to do. And and I thought this was a really interesting comment because it, to me it says in a nutshell that, you know, they're interested in making the game like Diablo. They're interested in making a Diablo game. It's kind of like how a lot of people talk about Diablo 3 and they're like, you know, Diablo 3 is a good game, but Diablo 3 is not a Diablo game. And a lot of people will go out of their way to point this out and basically say, you know, Diablo is not, Diablo 3 is like a good RPG, ARPG, but it's not a good Diablo game. Francis, I like console too, buddy. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I uh, I have a Nintendo Switch. I absolutely love Nintendo Switch. It's uh, it's probably one of the best things I've purchased in a long time. I feel like uh, that comment kind of lacks perspective. Actually, Nintendo is uh, is probably the least for children system out there. I find that Nintendo's games usually have a rather large amount of uh, of content in them, which is kind of made for mature audiences. Um, even though Nintendo hides that maturity behind a, a veil. for we <laughs> you can play D2R on console it's on all the consoles including the Nintendo Switch at least as far as we know the Nintendo Switch version hasn't even popped up on the eShop yet which is a little concerning I mean, that's something that I hope they'll fix, Francis. In due time. And something that you may have noticed already since I've gotten Whirlwind is God Whirlwind has a really high mana cost. It really, really does. It's such a ridiculously high mana cost and I hate it. Um, and I don't think I have any mana steal either, which of course is amplifying the issue. What's up, Stone Civilian? How goes it, buddy? Uh, I said, thanks for streaming, dude. I can't wait to play my PC tune on my Switch to go cross-play and handheld D2 is all I care about. Not sure how I feel about no bugged items, though. I'm not really sure that was on purpose, Stones. I don't really know what to say other than I'm not really sure it was on purpose. Um, I've done a lot of research into Diablo 2 Resurrected, um, and I've listened to all the Q&As. Um, I've actually, I actually read them on stream, if you're interested in watching them. And um, one of the things that I found odd was that... Um, so the ethereal item bug, the uh, e-bugging armors, was specifically said to still be in the game. They specifically said that they were leaving it. Um, and that seemed a little odd to me that it got taken out. So I don't think it got taken out on purpose. I think they accidentally unbroke it. So if you guys, I don't know if you guys actually know this, the history of e-bugging, but e-bugging is actually a bug that was left in the game deliberately uh, by the developers that was added accidentally. So at one point when you put the the uh, armor in the Herodric cube to add the sockets, it would take away the ethereal defense bonus. And so what they did was is they added the 50% ethereal bonus to it. And somehow what happened was is it got unbugged 
And so the original 50% that was being taken away and the 50% that was added to fix the bug got added together because the, 50, the original 50% stopped being taken away. But the 50% that they added to fix the bug stayed and so it ended up at 100% enhanced defense and uh, and it was a whole it was just it was a bug the whole thing was a bug in the first place so the chances of them having accidentally fixed that bug might actually be kind of a possibility I'm actually really excited that uh, that the game is going to be on the consoles, Francis. I I have played Diablo 2 for a really long time on computers, and uh, every time I've wanted to share Diablo 2 with somebody, um, you know, one of my friends who doesn't play on computers, uh, it, it was impossible. They they just they never played the game, and uh, and they never play have had a PC. So they could never experience the joy that was Diablo 2, and I think that's very sad. And uh, and I'm actually really excited that Diablo 2 is finally coming to the consoles. Because now, finally, I can be like, hey, have you played that really cool game, Diablo 2? And they can be like, yes. For the first time, I might hear an actual yes out of them. Now, will I hear a yes out of them? I don't know. You know, maybe they have to actually buy the game and play it. But, but there's a chance. I can hear a yes out of them now. Back in 2000, PCs were not an everyday thing. Not everybody had a PC that was capable of playing Diablo. Not in 2000. Later on, like around like 2003, 2004, I think it was a lot more common. And, uh, and I would definitely say that around then... There was uh, there was more of a chance that your friend might have had a PC that uh, that could play the game, but um, but it wasn't like guaranteed. PCs were expensive and uh, and they weren't necessary, and it wasn't until like I don't know I want to say like 2005 I think was really when it started to become like a big thing, like computers started to become big things. I think it was 2005. I mean, my family was a little bit ahead of the curve on the computers, although we were way behind on the uh, the actual, like, like internet. I mean, we had 56K internet forever because we were out in the country. Um, what corrupted means on items? Sure, I'll tell you exactly what corrupted means, all right? And it's going to be really quick. Corrupted means they're not playing Diablo 2. <laughs> that was the quickest explanation in history, wasn't it? If you see corrupted on an item, they're not playing Diablo 2. Um, I'm pretty sure corrupted comes from the mod to Diablo, which I wouldn't even call it a mod because it's... It's, uh... It's such an all-encompassing change to uh, to the game that I would honestly call it like a non-official expansion pack. Honestly, I've been told that PD2 is very easy. Like, extremely too easy. A couple people who um, who I know who've played the game pretty extensively have told me that it's very very easy. I mean, it's not a cheat; it's an entire game mode, so it's an entirely different like way to play the game. It's a, it's uh, I, I I hesitate to use the word mod because a mod is something that changes the game a little bit. You know, it doesn't drastically change the entire game. Have any of you guys ever done, ever done Skyrim modding? Raise your raise your hands or show your chinchilla emotes if you've done Skyrim modding. I I want to I want to see how many of you guys have have modded Skyrim. Hello. The restoration loop. 
So we got one. B3's modded Skyrim. So how many of you guys have modded Skyrim to the point of oblivion? Like literally like 300 plus mods loading all at the same time. And by the time you load into the game, it's not even the same game anymore. Like like vanilla Skyrim and the game that you're running like aren't even really even the same thing anymore. Like they're vaguely the same thing. You know, you've got literally like like 300 plus mods running and the game like barely loads and like the characters look like glamour girl models and uh and like you've added new npcs and new villages and you know new skills and your weapons don't even look the same anymore and you know like white run is still there <laughs> Like, that's PD2, in a nutshell. PD2 changes so much about the game that it's like running three or four hundred Skyrim mods and then trying to say that it's still the same game. That Skyrim with 300 plus mods is still the same game as vanilla Skyrim, and it's just not. You can mod Skyrim until it's a live-action version of Mar Super Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, how long have I been running with this stream? Four hours and 21 minutes. So long. It's a so long stream. No, I'm kidding. That's not even very long. I did like a 17 hour stream with the when Diablo 2 Resurrected came out. What's up, Comrade Dylan? Hello, hello. Uh, now might be another t a good time for me to plug my uh, my clan idea. So, I don't know how many of you guys are new from earlier, or if you guys are um, you know the same people who've been in here the entire time. I know some of you are, but uh, I am uh, planning to make a clan for Diablo 2 Resurrected, which involves you know people getting together and having fun, playing the game together in a group, and. Um, if you guys are interested, it's uh, it is something that I'm forming at the moment. You know, we're not we haven't actually formed it yet, but we're we're in the process of forming it. So if you hop on the uh, the Discord right now, um, go ahead and, and post that link. Uh, if you hop on the Discord, I'll see you B three. Have a good day, man. Um, there is a section down at the bottom that says you know clan formation or something like that. And, uh, and you, you guys can hop in there and uh, we can start trying to figure out what we want to do. Um, I haven't like uh, actually solidified anything yet, so it's a, it's a work in progress. My, my, I actually asked my nephew Mark to work on it a little bit, but I don't know if he even saw my message. Uh, we shall see. Uh, but obviously we have some time, you know, it is uh, it's only September 2nd and we still have 21 days left to go. 21 sad days of no Diablo 2 Resurrected. So that's a thing. Let me fix this. Um, I do not know, actually, and that's, I think that's one of the things that, um, that we're going to have to find out, um, is, is there official clan support or not, and if there is, then we're going to, we're going to use it, and if there's not, then we're going to do like in the old school days, so I don't know if you guys, uh, ever joined any clans back in like 2000, like on Counter-Strike or Team Fortress or anything like that, but one of the easiest ways to be in a clan uh, was to make the name of your character with the clan tags. So, um, like for instance, I don't know if, if particular the clan is actually going to be be this or not. Um, but like for in, in the old days, I might name my character say um, uh, Butt Stinks, right? So my character might be named Butt Stinks. But I would instead make name my character uh, something like this. So I would do. Uh, and then that would signify that I was inside of that clan. Um, there's a hundred different ways you can do that. It's it's uh, it's like a it's a whole thing. It, we used to do it back in the day for a long time. 
and um, you know you, you just basically put your little your little clan tags on and if you leave the clan you take your clan tags off and uh, you know if you're caught with clan tags that don't belong to you you get punched in the face and uh, and, and you know it's it's very unofficial but uh, but it works the gang gang <laughs> the gang gang mans that's right, we're the Gang Gang Mans. Ow, stop being rude to me. It is rude when you do that. I got no mana. Ooh, a Great Maul. What's that? Ethereal Great Maul. Um, I mean, if they have absolutely no way for us to, you know establish our clan then that's what we're then that's what we'll do if they have in in-game clan ability you know creation then that would be cool I would definitely like that um, I was in a couple clans back in the day um, I was in TKO that was a pretty fun one um, why am I stuck on the tree? No! Uh, TKO was Total Knockout. That was actually the clan I was in for a really long time. And that clan actually uh, converted to uh, MML, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, they did lineage games for a while. They had their own lineage server and stuff. And uh, I remember that not going well. Come here, Blood Raven. Your army of the dead is too powerful for me. Your army of the dead is too powerful. I feel like you'd be better off with just a melee attack on Blood Raven because she runs around too much. I don't know for certain what tag we're going with, Comrade Dylan. I mean, I do kind of feel like GGM makes sense because it's three letters and a lot of the times your tags are three letters. Usually people don't go with anything more than three letters or anything less than three letters and it just kind of makes sense. Um, although, you know, I don't have that big of a head that I'm like, hey, it's got to be my name on YouTube or else. But, um, but I do think it's a cool idea. Yes. But yeah, usually it has to be three letters, which is kind of the thing. Um, yeah, if you guys want to hop into my Discord, that is my Discord. That's why we'll do the, the clan stuff. Um, of course, my Discord is not just for clan stuff, so we will have, like, a clan section where we talk, uh, where we talk and stuff like that. So, uh, it's a, it's gotta be all figured out and whatnot. We're, we're working on it. <laughs> Join the Discord. Get your butt in there. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of stuff down there already. Um, I even was making jokes about like a a code of contact, like um, <laughs> what did I call it? Uh, we're gonna use the uh, the honor code from the Mandalores. The Mandalore honor code is um, is actually pretty close to what I would want, honestly. Honor is life, for with no honor, one may as well be dead. Loyalty is life, for one without one's clan, one has no purpose. Death is life, one should die as they have lived. Defending yourself and your family, contributing to the clan's welfare, when called upon by the clan, rallying to his cause. It's actually, it's actually not bad at all. Kind of fits, too. Alright guys and gals, um, like I said, I do kind of want to keep these little videos short because they are day of the... And uh, last thing I want is for it to be like 17 hours long and nobody ever wants to watch them. And um, tomorrow... Yes, tomorrow we will be doing the Druid. Um, and then finally, of course, we don't have to vote on the last one. Um, tomorrow, we'll, uh, the last one will be the Amazon. And we did forget to, to do uh, what Druid we were going to do. So let's do that last. So what build what build druid should i play tomorrow 
Uh, so we're going to keep this simple. I'm just going to do three uh, different ones, and you guys can... Uh, <laughs> You guys can choose which ones you want. All right, so we're going to do Summoning Druid. That one's always a laugh. Um, we're going to do uh, Werewolf Druid, uh, Bear Druid. I'm going to leave this rather generic. And then we're going to do Elemental Druid. So it's going to be up It's going to be up to me, depending on which ones you, you pick. And... Um, and then we're also going to do Raven Lord Druid just for memes. So if you guys pick Raven Lord Druid, that's what we're doing. I don't care. All right, so we got 10 more minutes until that poll ends. So make your make your votes count. I guess I'll try and kill Blood Raven real quick. That'll be a, that'll be a thing. I guess I could put some of my points into uh, out and battle orders. That might not be a bad idea. Or iron skin, maybe. Increased run speed. More points in sword mastery, perhaps. Put one point in sword mastery. That sounds good. Alright. Come over here. A respect to get the point out of double swing. I don't need. My army will destroy. Man, you can't even feed potions to your merc. That's brutal. You know what? Let's try Bash on her. It might actually work. Lock her into position is what I'm trying to do. Which, it's it's kind of working. If you don't like being knocked back, I can tell. I think it screws with her AI or something. Oh lord, look at those freaking three different choices there, and every single one of them is one point. Whew. Ain't got nothing to say about that, Aetherite. I'm gonna vote for Raven Lord. I hope you guys know this. So if you guys don't vote, it's gonna be Raven Lord. If tomorrow on camera I'm playing the Raven Lord, I want you all to know that it was y'all's fault because y'all didn't vote. Okay. <laughs> Elemental Druid is beefing up now. The beefering. The beefering. I hope you guys saved some ch Cobra Bubbles. You could have spent those chinchilla turds on votes, sir. That's 1,500 chinchilla turds you could have spent on votes. I'm still going to put points in Ravens. I hope you know this. <laughs> Raven Lord. I'm going to get to level 50 with just Ravens. Yes, Nightbot. Did you know that over 200,000 Amazon Prime subs go without a home every month? Why not use that Prime sub here and give it a great home and support a great streamer? It's free and included with your Amazon Prime membership. I didn't write that, by the way. That was that was one of my fans. Complexic. He shows up uh, all the time. In fact, he was in here so often uh, during the beta, he had like the highest post count out of everybody. He's a good dude. He's helped me out with a lot of stuff. 
I killed Blood Raven, and then I just like crossed my arms, and I was like, "I'm done. That's the end of the stream. We're done. We're just waiting on the vote. Who needs the no? No, we're done. Done." Can I show my stats for a few seconds? Sure. Um, I can even explain them. So I have barely enough strength to put points for my sword. So 71 points in the strength is how many I needed for the swords. And then I have barely enough dexterity to use the uh, dexterity here. So, so for the sword, again, 45 strength. And then I have all the rest of my points into vitality. Um, and then I'm running uh, Berserker's Headgear and Berserker's Hallberg together just because I just threw it on there. And then I have Death's Touch set, and I have two Death's Touch swords, which I, I, it's just, it's literally just what I put on. And then I got the Death's Guard Sash, and then I'm running Angelic Wings with the uh, two Angelic Rings for the attack rating, and then I just got some crappy boots that I found. No, this is just some character I slapped together in like five seconds, Redick. It's, it's really not a big deal. I mean, I just, I literally just picked a couple, uh, some gear and I just threw it in there. I wasn't really even putting much thought into it. Uh, the goal wasn't to make myself o OP. The goal was just to make myself able to kill things. That's all I was trying to do. Um, I didn't want to, like, give myself the most godlike gear that ever existed. Although, you know, later on, when I, when I play Diablo 2 Resurrected, I probably will do that, so. Yeah, the goal was showing off Whirlwind, actually. Yes, you're right, Aether, right. Should have given myself some mana steel if I had a brain, but I don't. Brains are for those people who actually have brains. Me, I've got the non-brain. The non-brain. Little hamster. A poor little hamster fell off his wheel in there. He wasn't. He wasn't. He had too many, uh, too many sunflower seeds last night. That's really all there was to it. You know, he was, he wasn't having a good time. Uh, he just, he, you know, he drank a little bit too much water at the bar. <laughs> We're not here for your smarts, that's for sure. Well, great. That's good news. I'm happy. I don't know why I'm happy, you know, because like, I'm not smart enough to know why. But I'm happy, though. The thinky thinky part, that's right. Come here, Bishy Boss, let's die. Die, 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 die. Ooh, a longsword. Could it be better than the piece of crap that I have on? No. Well, actually, 1 to 71 lightning damage. No. Speaking of time for another drink of water. <laughs> Please, no, sir. God, what are you guys going to pick for the Amazon? That's my question. It's probably going to be Plague Javelin. Like, what Javelin? What are, which kind of Amazon should I play? Lightning Amazon. Offend Amazon. The most broken Amazon in all existence. The one that doesn't work. It doesn't even work. You can't actually build a Fend Amazon. You guys are the rudest. So rude. If some of you are not uh, are not in on the joke here, there's a reason why. It's a it's a it's a nerdy joke. So Diablo 2 has a bug in it, and the bug has been there for a very long time. And Fend is an ability that um, attacks every single monster around you, okay, one time. So it's every single monster around you once, all right? And um, evades, for some reason, cancel Fend. So Fend just doesn't attack. But the animation still occurs. So pretend you're uh, surrounded by 30 monsters, okay? And you use the Fend ability. You literally will attack 30 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Alright? 
Now imagine you accidentally evade at the beginning of this skill. All right? You still perform the animation for all 30 attacks, but you do not actually attack anything. Like, you do not actually attack anything at all. And so your character is just sitting there doing the animation, despite the fact that she's doing nothing. And you can't run away, you can't move, you can't do anything. You just stand there, and you get, and you get murdered. And it's awful. It's, it's just awful. So the winner is Elemental Druid. Although Raven Lord got a got a hefty four votes. Okay, so that, that I for a class and a build that I completely made up, that was actually a pretty nice uh, vote spread there. I mean, I was gonna do it too. Full Ravens. Okay, full full Ravens. It was gonna be 100% Raven build, and uh, and I was gonna love it. But no, you guys didn't want the Raven Lord, so that's fine. No Raven Lord. It's terrible. It's terrible. Alright, so we're going to end with a raid. I like to end with a raid. I didn't used to end with raids, but I like to end with raids now. Um, so let me see who is online, and we are going to raid them. A chinchilla raid. That's right. That's right. Oh, my raid leader is on. Let's raid, let's raid my raid leader. How about that? Girl of Gore. So this was my raid leader on Final Fantasy XIV. I've raided her before, but uh, we're going to raid her again. And she doesn't know it's coming, so... Boop! Make sure you uh, get your chinchilla emotes ready. We need to spam them in chats. I expect you guys to distract the crap out of her so that she dies, because she's probably playing League of Legends. So I need you to make sure you distract her horribly, horribly, horribly well until she's uh, until she dies. All right, much much death. Okay, much death. Oh. Thank you so much. Holy shit. The, uh, Many chanchulas. Oh, thank you for the follow. Hello, Ginger Gaming Mentor and friends. Hello. I'm being chinchillerated. <laughs> Comrade Dylan, thank you so much for the follow. Chinchilla farts and turds. Okay. As long as it's you guys, I don't mind if you shit it up the place. Who <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Who everywhere. A whole chinchilla turds. Alright guys and gals. I'll Go see you next time. Weird in here, but we're gonna have a good time. <laughs>